Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to Tone Talk with Mark and Dave. It's uh, episode 141, and we've got Kevin Proctor from Iconic Guitars. Kevin, how are you? All right, Mark, you got stuff going on with your mic. I do? Yeah, we're hearing a little fluttering in the, in the path now, like a digital fluttering. Oh, wait, maybe it was Kevin. I think it's Kevin, it's not me. I hear it. I also hear it because we can't hear Kevin now. And now we can't hear you. If yeah. that's your computer, go back to your phone and turn that off. All right, we're starting off good at Tone Talk today. All right. <laughs> well, hey. hi, guys. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Kevin, why don't you. No. No, we get, you got no, no voice. Vocal. It was working right before I hit the live button. I will say that we were all talking fine. So, um, so guys, I don't know what happened, but in the meantime, since Kevin can't speak, <laughs> I thought I'd show you something. We, you know, we mentioned on the show the other day um, when we had Ron from RJM on the show, and he talked about his new little mixer box. I thought I'd show it to you in the meantime while we're waiting for our technical difficulties. So. Here is Ron's little mixer box. So it's a full stereo mixer in a little tiny Hammond style box. Hmm. I like the uh I like that way. How does it oh yeah. I, nice I just like the labeling on it. It's like cool. Yeah. <laughs> and if I just thought I'd show it. It's really it's really useful and really cool for pedal boards and or racks or things or various things that you want to put in parallel. So go yep. out and buy it. And they're not a sponsor of the show, but we like Ron. Let's see if I can hear uh, Kevin. Oh. And meanwhile, we could talk about uh, Sweetwater and uh, fixed pedal boards. And uh, while we're waiting, uh, our sponsor, Sweetwater, uh, you know, below in the videos, we have a link, a uh, little link to uh, buy stuff. If you're going to buy stuff from Sweetwater, go buy it there. If you're going to buy that new Jakey Lee 20 amp. Go buy it there with our link. Yeah, we'll talk about that soon. The show will get a little kickback, and you help us out a lot. And um, on top of that, uh, Fixed Pedal Boards also. FixedPedalBoards.com for all your little pedal board accessory needs. Uh, and there you have it. Go oh, there. It. Thanks for doing my job. I, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, not to mention, please subscribe, people. Subscribe yeah. to the dang show so you know when we're doing a show you know it's helpful you yeah, get a little well, reminder it pops up and says hey there's a tone talk tonight all Hello. right i think i'm in you're in no i gotta unmute this guy okay can you hear us all right everything good yeah now i can hear you i don't know what happened as soon as we went live my audio went away yeah that's so weird bizarre bizarre all right well you're back and it's kevin proctor from iconic guitars and uh not as good of a camera on this one but hey no, at least you can talk not. sorry <laughs> but you can talk yes so, go ahead mark now start the show again all right uh should i just <laughs> uh i'm getting Kevin. cool audio you guys what's that what are you getting i'm getting double audio getting double audio He's oh, hearing an echo. Well, I don't think anyone else is hearing an echo, right? No, I don't hear an echo. Hold on. If you're, unless you're. Yeah, I had I had the YouTube up still because I remember I was gonna I was gonna watch on there. All oh right, yeah, we'll that's it. it. Yep. All right. I'm uh, you know beginners at this uh, video podcast thing. <laughs> it's all right. We're, uh, we're after doing... 140 shows, so are we. We've been through the ringer. We, we know. <laughs> Which I don't know. I don't. I don't know what that says of us. <laughs> well, you know, here we are. We're gonna let's have some fun. Hey, thanks for having me on, guys. Appreciate it. Let me get that yeah. over there. Cheers. Cheers. I guess. Uh, I guess we have to say what we're drinking. Uh, I'll go first. I got a uh, little uh, Jack Daniel single barrel malt. Ooh. Yeah. This one. Uh, Incidentally, was the last time Dave and I were drinking together. It was this this bottle right here. And Nam, it was. Um, yeah. 
Well, I have. For relaxing times, make it Suntory times. There you go. <laughs> wow, I never heard of that. Before. Someone was nice uh, to give me a Suntory whiskey, and of course, when I hear Suntory whiskey, I always think of Bill Murray and Lost in Translation. So that's uh, that's one of those fancy uh, Japanese whiskeys, right? Yes, it is, and it's quite good. Right on. It actually beat out my uh, the Belvini Scotch I also have here laying on the shelf. Nice. And Become both of them, Irish. both of them, way beat out the uh, Irish whiskey that I have on the shelf too. But what's the Irish one? Uh, it's the Red Breast Irish whiskey. All right, hold on. Let me kill this down a little bit. I'm trying to get this right so it looks all right. I've got it's a much better, much better before. My bad. Well, Mark's got a fancy beer. He's got a Dos Equis. Oh, Dos Equis. Dos Equis. Nice. Yeah. But you know what? I, I, I man, I, it's good to finally be here with you guys. I. Um, you know, been uh, on and off with the show. What, what do you have? 140 years? What have you been doing like four know. years? How many do you have, Mark? It's 140. Well, we've had a few episodes here and there outside of the, like we have the Ask Dave episodes too. So right. I mean, if you add up the Ask Dave episode, we, we have like over 150 or 60 episodes. Right on. Uh, and it's like six years we've been doing it. Yeah, I, I, I was going to say four or five, but yeah, I guess I, Crazy, it's probably years. about right. Yeah. Time flies. Yeah, yeah it's still getting old shit sucks, man. <laughs> it really does. Like twenty years just flew by. I'm like moving my son out. Uh, yeah, and it's just crazy. I'm like, wow. He's what are you gonna do now? No one's in the house. Uh, you oh, get you, what, what's the movie with uh, Terry Bradshaw where he gets the naked room? <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's kind of like the studio. You know, everybody just hangs out in their nakedness. Kim's over, his kid comes over. And I can't remember what the hell the movie is, but. Kid comes over, he's like, Dad, why don't you have any clothes? Well, you're in my naked room. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't ask you to come home. Right? <laughs> come, back, come back to your place. I didn't see that movie, but I'm just guessing that would be the comment. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That's hysterical. Um, yeah. It'll if be you don't a, like it, go back. I don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> Not, Whatever I mean, the hell you want, that's probably what you're going to do. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, maybe a lot of drinking. <laughs> Is that your know. last one at home? Yeah. Yeah, empty nesters. So... Sweet. Yeah, well, I've been empty for yeah. a while. Mostly. Oh, you have? Yeah, we get transients every now and then, but whatever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> transients. It's, it's all, that's what fun. we that's what we call the kids after they leave. Then they're then they come back. They're transients. Right. <laughs> I like that. I'll have to remember that one. <laughs> Don't awesome. be coming becoming a transient now. Right. <laughs> yep. I got a ways to go though. Stay a little while. Yeah, you got Ryder who's looking, who's looking really adult like these days. I, I was like, wow, he grew up. Man. Oh, he's huge. Yeah. He's a size 11 he? shoe. His really? hand is almost as big as mine. How old is he? And he's 12. Jeez. And he's five, five, six now. With wow. a size 11 shoe? Yeah, he's going he's to be bigger. about dudes with big feet, right? <laughs> <laughs> Big hands. Big I don't shoes. know if that's true, but yes. They were big shoes. That's what I was going to say. What the fuck are you thinking? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then and then he dropped a ton of weight and like all and he's working out and it's just oh, like, yeah, yeah. He looks good. He looks good. Did, no. did, did he have a good time at Tesla? He couldn't care less. Oh really? He, he went, but he couldn't care less. Oh wow. I mean, he likes some 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 rock, but that's not totally his thing. You know, it's like more into hip-hop and stuff stuff that i don't want to listen oh. to really yeah uh, well some of it's okay but 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 not it's not my thing he's got his own thing that he you know yeah he's into music though for sure well, like cool. he con i think he has the the earbuds surgically implanted in his ears <laughs> my son also i mean like literally, literally it's always implanted you, you try to talk to him and just like Ugh, never mind. Yeah, no, the kids are, <laughs> my kids are always wearing the never AirPods. Mind. I got a set of the AirPods, man. I, I think I had them for the weekend and I took them back. I'm like, these are the most uncomfortable, you know, in ish ear kind of thing. Uh, the ones I'm wearing right now are the um, not that I'm going to the gym or anything on a regular basis. I do drive by there several times a day. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, I'm like, hey, what's up? That's with your spare time. And they get my payment once a month. That they, they know that I'm still alive. Well, you know, my money. wife and I, I don't even feel bad because we got a, uh, I don't know if it was an email or whatever, but we got a uh, thing from 24 Hour Fitness last year. So I think they were trying to get some, you know, uh, business coming back in after COVID or whatever. 
So they got us a thing. It was two hundred and fifty dollars for the year. So, you know, 20 bucks a month. Right. And I'm like, I spend way stupider money than that. You know, just to have the ability to, you know, on a whim be like, hey, I'm going to go whatever treadmill or whatever the hell. Right. Um, but, yeah, she, she would tell you I've probably been there three or four times. You know, so it cost me like 50, 60 bucks every time I go to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. That's yeah. The, the, uh, I have a membership to a gym that started as Holiday Health Spa in um, California, wow. which later turned into Bally's. Oh, yeah. I remember which, the Bally's. Which, right? which then later turned into LA Fitness. Uh, they bought them out or something because uh, yeah. LA Fitness existed also, but then they bought the Bally's chain out or something. And yeah, those old Bally's clubs were pretty nice back in the day. Yeah, and and the funny thing is, um, for years I had another membership to another health gym too, twenty four hour fitness. But um, for years, I was like grandfathered in, and they kept charging my card for years, for years and years and years. <laughs> but wait, it's only a hundred and ten dollars a year. Oh wow! Oh, yeah. Grandfathered in, so that's like. My, yeah, what, ten, less than ten dollars a month. So right. I'm like, I'm never canceling this. Screw it. I'll just keep right. it. Yeah, well, I mean, at that point, honestly, at this time in our life, but now I'm using it again, so it's it's fine. So, but I look back now. at all the money that I've spent on shit in my life, you know, especially with relation to you know the things that I'm into: cars, guitars, motorcycles, shit like that. Oh yeah, you I've spent spend tons it. more stupid money than that. Like, you know, immeasurably more money on on you know gear. I've got a there's literally next to me in a in a literal heap there's probably 12 pedals just i was just about up. to say i yeah, have all to... pedals that i bought each pedal <laughs> just themselves that i haven't played in a year you know yeah. and pay for a gym membership but uh <laughs> i used to have a bunch but now we, we sold a bunch on air <laughs> that's right you don't have any more left do you? no i have some but not not uh, no there's still another box i could go through yeah i'm i'm i'm, I'm going to the the simple uh you know guitar chord amplifier uh you know i have uh, right behind me uh i don't know if you can see under under that mesa is uh, a small box 50. Mm -hmm. uh, that's probably one of the ones that gets a lot of activity uh that metropolis you, you know uh, no nothing could be bad said about that metroplex um but that right behind me that's that's this is one of my favorite amps to crank with this 215 cab uh, 66 basement. Oh yeah! Oh, wow, I have one of those. That cap's Dude, huge. Through the 15s, it just rattles your pant legs. You know, just dime the freaking thing and go for it. Wow, so good. Cool, <clears throat> awesome. That's sweet. So, uh, tell us, uh, how was your, how was everybody's week this week? Dave, I have I have hard time believing that it's Friday when it's Friday. That's uh, it. It feels like there should be two more days left to work just because there's that much more stuff to get done. Um, but uh, yeah, it was, I mean, it was good. We, we've had, uh, you know, some, um, we've been ever growing here, you know? Um, so that's a challenging thing to manage uh, when <clears throat> I think we're 13, 13 people here now at Iconic and uh, we've got a really great workforce. But one of the things that I try to do with that is, is understand that, you know, people have things to do outside of work. And, and I think, uh, you know, that the working from home and COVID really brought that to the forefront for a lot of people. They realized like, hey, you know, there is shit to do outside of going to work. Um, so, you know, I always try to be conscientious if, you know, we've got guys that have young kids. Um, you know, I didn't get to go to those uh whatever plays and shit like that. When my kids were young, they only do it once, you know, they're only in third grade for a little bit, you know, work yeah. is here all the time. Yeah. So I uh, try to run a, um, a schedule with everyone that, that allows them to be present in their home life, because I find that people who are happier in their work life are better mates to their spouse, parents to their children, and when they're happier at home, they're better employees. So it, it's a win-win for yeah. me. Um, you know, so we have guys that run split shifts. Uh, you know, if you got, you know, whatever, go to the doctor on Tuesday or whatever, and you don't want to, you know, whatever, maybe come in for an hour or two, go to the doctor and come back. Just take the day, make it up on Saturday. You know, it, it's, uh, 
a, a little bit of flexibility like that. I've noticed in in the years that I've been running this, uh, you know, that we've had employees. It just really works well for everybody, you know. And and the caveat to that is is always it it, it should not be a detriment to either one of us, right? There, it's it just like any other relationship kind of thing. If you're the one feeling like you're being taken advantage of, you're going to there's going to be some animosity building up there, right? Whether that's a friendship, a marriage, or an employment relationship. Right. Yep. And we've all seen the disgruntled employee, wherever you may be. And they're like, mother, son of a me, or whatever. And uh, but, you know, the, then the thing <clears throat> like you go into a place like, you know, I, I, I don't know if you've been out here, Mark, but, but Dave will know what I'm talking about. In and out. Right. You go into in and out. I've been there. Yeah. Everyone in there always looks happy, you know. True. So I'm like, you're working their ass off. I don't know if they have time yeah, to be anything but happy. <laughs> With a smile ass. on their face, you know, and, and that's what I like. It, you know, everybody that comes here. uh uh, you know, you'll hear guys whistling, singing. There's always, we've got, you know, one of those big uh, JBL tower, uh, I think it's Eon or whatever the hell it is, you know, like a full on, you know, PA back there with subs and all that. <laughs> Everyone just, uh, you know, whoever gets here first usually uh, will uh, acquire the Bluetooth connection and, and then you get to listen to whatever playlist they're playing. Uh, so it could be anything from, you know, 80s pop stuff, uh, you know, in excess kind of stuff to, you know, Meshuggah, Slayer. I mean, you name it. It's just a, it's a, a, a vast, you know, country. We're just listening to some, you know, new country a few minutes ago before I came in here. And I'm like, okay, whatever, you know. But, yeah, it's, it's not uncommon to have people just whistling around. But, to you know, I, I think that's one of the things um, about being here and working here is that the days just fly by so fast, which is kind of the point. When I, when I get to Friday, I'm like, man, the week's we done right. already. Yeah. Yeah, I understand that. Definitely. My week's been really short. I haven't really done anything. But that's a good week. <laughs> so you had a you had a crazy. Well, week. I mean, I, I I worked Monday, but then I was off Tuesday and Wednesday in Ventura, and then Thursday oh. I, I went to the factory to test amps. So I did that, right? And then, which was rough after right going from literally I drove from Ventura straight to the factory. Oh, nice! Well, I dropped my my family off, but. Um, and tested amps and then uh, today was like ordering some parts and doing some paperwork and doing organizing a few things which sometimes happens where you feel like you've been stuck in front of the computer all day and you haven't ever left i have those days too yeah you know and and, and, at, and at some point you just go well that's that's it for today <laughs> well I, I dude i i totally get that you know um one of the most challenging things through COVID, you know, I, I think everybody saw, you know, at least in the MI, saw just a huge uptick in in business. You know, sales were just yeah insane. So we were on a on a I would call it a, a projected uh, trajectory of of becoming more known in popularity and sales and all that, just through the things that we were working on. <clears throat> and um, then COVID hit and it just kind of went buck wild. I mean, for everybody, right? Everybody, yeah. And I would spend probably six or seven hours of my day just canvassing the world for tuners. And <laughs> I mean, you name find it. Find the parts. I need the parts. It was literally just, you know, trying to find anybody who had anything all the way down to you know, paying freaking list price for something off a of reverb just so I could ship a guitar because, you know, my accountant and I would go through and we're going through accounts receivable and she's going, man, why, you know, why do we have so much in accounts receivable? I go, well, these 10 guitars need this and, and these need that, you know, and it was small strap buttons, things like that, you know, just yeah. really small things that were keeping kind of the whole program from moving. I think you guys experienced some of that too, Dave. Yeah, and 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 if you have to buy it retail to finish it, so what? Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, uh, okay, so yeah, you make forty dollars less or something, thirty dollars less on yeah. on or whatever it is you're buying. You make a little Just bit, come, come a little bit less you know. in the profit, but at least you shipped it. Right. It, well, and, and I mean, you know this as well as I do that, you know, there's just not that much margin in what we're doing anyway. You know, we're right. relying on moving a, a good bit of product. Uh, so yeah, at that point, twenty, thirty bucks to to free up. Uh, you know, a, a bunch of, you know, stuff that's sitting in account receivable. Um, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it was challenging. It, it, and I, I'd love to say it's better, but it's not really, you know? Yeah, it's still um, a waiting game on parts. 
Yep. Godo parts, Floyd Rose parts. Right now, uh, I just put in a big Godo order. Um, and to get like, like we use the SD91s, like the old uh, uh, Clusen style tuners. I, I just yep. think they're the best of the, you know, I, I've tried them all and, and they're, you know, we use their staggered ones. <clears throat> And the locking, uh, the locking ones or the no, uh, just on our vintage, vintage, vintage modern stuff. I just yeah, yeah. do regular, regular old ones, but we do use the locking ones from time to time. They are but, great, they're great tuners. So, absolutely, I, I 100% agree. The, the you know, the actual gear mechanism mechanism yeah. super smooth, uh, no binding as a general rule, blah blah blah. But to you know, and I'll usually order them 200 to 300 sets at a time, it's eight months to get those. Yeah, and put your I orders think, in way ahead of time. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I, I'm literally ordering for 24 right now. Mm -hmm. I just put in a big order for 24. Uh, same thing. I, you and I have talked about the Floyd Rose stuff. Uh, you well, know, there, were, I, there were problems getting them, right? It's always well, it, a problem you know, getting them. And, and, Even and before I know COVID? This, God, this. It's always been sort of a problem. Really? Yeah. But I, I will give this to Andy. That You know, there were some things happened that, that were beyond his control. Yeah. Um, and, and outside of his which shouldn't have happened outside of his, you know, knowledge scope on, on, on the product, uh, not to get into, you know, all that, but, you know, we had a, a metric shit ton of guitars sitting here waiting to ship, um, and still do. I, I I've got probably, <clears throat> I don't know, 400 something guitar, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Trem sitting in uh, a PO waiting for them. I, I, we just got the first like 80 uh, of that. Yeah. So like, yeah. you know, here again, guitar sitting there, bodies cut, painted, you know, wow. uh, running out of room to store them. Uh, Makes you just want to do hardtails. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. you just... can generally get the hard some hardtail plate. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's. Uh, I don't even I have mean, it made. <laughs> is there still a lot of demand for uh, Floyd Rose guitars? We do an, uh, yeah. an awful lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I figured, I figured. We're doing a bunch of seven strings right now <clears throat> with them. Um, so yeah, I, I I don't know that there is a uh, you know there are variants I think that uh, you know people have taken some of the the little things that that tick us all off about you know some of the the original Floyd design that uh, that AP still brings out um, you know like hand tugs making a really good one you know even the Godot Floyd is really nice um, but uh, you know I've been uh, the Godot Floyd is probably better. It's not probably better, Dave. It is. It, it, it is better. better. It is better. <laughs> I have well, one on my Ibanez, and it's, it's yeah, it's but it, but it doesn't say Floyd Rose on it. Um, no. But and, and you know the base plate is a little bit different. So on on our bodies, uh, especially you know if it were a surface mount, that's great. I, I could use the Goto one as a replacement. But our our route is is so close around uh, the Floyd design mm -hmm. base plate that I can't fit the Goto base plate. Yeah. In. Um, you know, so yeah, that presents a bit of a problem. But yeah, it, it, you know the the logistics thing, the uh, you know supply chain issues. Uh, you know that COVID uh, began with um, you know whatever in March of 2020 <clears throat> have marginally gotten better for us anyway. Still challenging. Yeah, well, that's good. Um... Well, maybe we should uh, take from the start. Tell us about iconic guitars. How did how did things start for you with the when with you're the a wee little kid? Yeah, what, when I was a wee little kid. How did you how did you make the decision to go into the guitar business? Well, uh, I wanted to I wanted to work really hard and not make a lot of money. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, I've heard this before. Yeah, it seems to be a trend. I was going to say. Yeah. You know, I'll tell you what. Um, I I, uh, I have. I have one of those inquisitive minds. I like to know how things work uh, from the time I was a little kid uh, and certainly got me in trouble with my folks, you know, tearing apart new toys and shit like that. <laughs> uh, then it kind of became a thing where my folks were like, all right, well, if you're going to take it apart, you need to learn how to put it back together. And if you don't put it back together, right, then, then you're going to be in trouble, right? Cause I would get in trouble for taking it apart, being inquisitive, but then I would, I think my folks realized and they said, all right, well, you're going to get in trouble if you can't put it back together. So that became a challenge, right? You don't want to get an ass whooping because you've ruined your toy. But all through that, I, you know, I've just kind of had that through my life. Pardon me, did uh, a good stint 
10 years in custom motorcycles. I'd always been into, you know, badass bikes and cars and guitars. It's just kind of been my whole thing since I can remember. And uh, always been into guitars, but uh, build it, when I actually started building stuff, it was motorcycles. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, to make a very long story short, uh, had a good deal of success doing the motorcycle thing and um, had split off part of the business, sold part of it, and uh, took that capital and reinvested in the manufacturing side. And that was in about in 2005, late 2005. Uh, went into an engineering capsule, if you will, to, to make completed motorcycles. We uh, did testing with the California Air Resource Boards, you know, submitted ungodly documents to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration so they could get a 17-digit VIN. Um, full fab shop. It, just a, it was a really, really cool operation. Wow. Um, but while we were doing that, and I was loading toads of ca loads of cash into that, uh, we, we moved into 2007. And I think, as we all know, you know, the real estate market crashed, the you know, economy went to crap. Um, and come to find out, the product that I was building, very expensive high-end motorcycles, were no longer being purchased because nobody had any freaking money. <laughs> right. So, <clears throat> uh, then through that, um, you know, to here again, make a very long story short, uh, had some health issues, compounded right that with a, with a, with a really gnarly divorce. And I found myself uh, couching it at a buddy of mine's place. Uh, God love him for taking me in. But uh, uh, my daughter called me and said, hey, dad, uh, my dog's not our dog is not doing well. Can you stop by after work? So I went over there. <clears throat> and I happened to look into the spare bedroom and see under the bed a couple of my guitars that were in there. So at this point, I had way more time than I had money. Couldn't I, I couldn't rub two nickels together. So I started playing again. And I, after probably 10 plus years of just not really playing seriously, you know, every now and then I would pick it up and, and jam. <clears throat> but I started spending some hours with the guitar. And then one of my heroes got their first signature. This is when the Gilmore uh, signature custom shop came out. And I wanted one so bad, but $7,000 plus dollars was nowhere near a reality for me. <clears throat> So I said, I'm going to give it a whirl and see what I can do. So I built that guitar. I re replicated that guitar, the, the Gilmore, and I um, called it the Dark Side. Mm -hmm. uh, put it up against a bunch of the custom shops. Uh, worked with a buddy of mine who um, has been a you know custom shop repairman and, and works at a, a great little shop down here in San Diego, Mike Boone. Worked with him, gleaned a bunch of stuff off of him, and, and it just kind of seemed like something I wanted to do. Kind of uh, it, an itch from that um building thing that i was doing before so i said what the hell let's do a couple more and uh a couple of years later my tax accountant looked at me and he goes kevin it looks like you're trying to write off your hobby and i said what's the problem mm. because you're going to get audited <laughs> so uh i talked with my wife um because this was a, a, that whole story there spanned about four years uh that I, you know i was kind of tinkering, if you will, a hobby builder, like a lot of guys are, right? Garage building. Mm -hmm. It started in one car of the garage. Then I moved into the second car of the garage and I turned the one car garage into my spray booth. Um, and at the point that I was asking my wife to move her car out of the third part of the garage was when she said, no, <laughs> you got to do something else. You go, so th that's when, uh, that was 2000. 15, I moved into that. I moved out of the garage into my first shop. And um, <clears throat> kind of from there, man, the rest is history. We showed, showed some guitars at uh, NAMM the next year. Uh, had, a, had a really good response. Uh, you know, and, and at that time, it was still before direct-to-consumer had kind of started as much as it is now in, uh, in the musical instrument industry. And uh, I remember being at NAM and, and dealers walking by, and I can still name them by name, um, and be like, oh, well, you're selling direct? Yeah, we, we don't want to deal with you if you're selling direct. And I'm like, well, I need to sell guitars. So if you're not going to buy them, then what? Right? So it was like this catch-22. <clears throat> um, so we ended up uh, finding uh, our first dealer was actually a distinctive guitar in Milwaukee. And I just visited there a couple of months ago. Really great shop. Lots of great guitars. 
great dudes in there, uh, carry a bunch of high end stuff. And that was kind of our launching platform. It was, you know, it was like, oh, well, these guys think we're cool enough. Right. Um, so then we we kind of just, you know, continue to build out that dealer network in in what I feel is a very responsible, uh, scalable timeline. We are pretty choosy about the dealers that we work with. Um, not to be like, you know, nose up in the air, but we want people that understand um, the dynamic of dealing with somebody when they're talking about, you know, ordering a guitar or, or you know, commissioning a, a guitar through the dealer <clears throat> and them being able to speak educatedly about the differences between, you know, obviously we're building, you know, Fender-esque shapes. I mean, that's not, I'm not the only guy doing that, right? Uh, so if you've got a, if you've got a client that comes into your shop and you're like, oh, well, tell me about, you know, this one versus that one or that one. And, and that person can't speak educatedly to those and they, and they don't, uh, or aren't able to, to tell the difference. It doesn't have to be better or worse, just the differences mm -hmm. and that, that dealer isn't really doing you that almost a disservice at that point, you know? Yeah, that's true. That's true for sure. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that was, you know, so that started in 2011 into 12. <clears throat> and uh, like I said, you know, somewhat of a hobby, but, you know, uh, there was a period in time in there where um, I had um, won a lawsuit against uh, my ex. Uh, she had taken my former uh, corporate assets and liquidated them. Um, and, you know, it's, it's California. You got to share that shit 50 50, right? So right. you just kept all the money. <clears throat> and uh, the judge oh, said, hey, you can't do that. So you owe him X. <laughs> we were going to uh, recapitalize this guitar company with that. And that ended up not happening. Hmm. So, there, you know, everything kind of now that I look back on it, everything kind of happened for a reason. And I, I look at it like the old cobblestone streets, you know, you, you know, just one brick at a time laying the foundation of this thing. And, and as it's gone, I'm very happy the way that it went the way that it did. Mm -hmm. Well, that's yeah, good. I mean, the, the brand's building up. I mean, you know, I, I hear a lot of great things about the guitars and they, they look great, you know? Oh uh, yeah. They're great. <clears throat> I mean, I was impressed at the NAM at the, the set next. Yeah. You Man. know, there's one right behind me there. I, uh, I think great. you and I talked about this, Dave, you know, <clears throat> my first real guitar, yeah. Um, well, yeah. 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 My first real guitar uh, that I bought with my own money was a 78 Les Paul Custom. So that has kind of just stayed with me that that 24 and three quarter inch scale, you know, just that body shape. It's 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 you know, I, I watched Randy Rhodes play guitar when I was 11 years old. Yeah. There's just a lot of, you know, a lot of Les Paul in in my uh, my musical DNA, I guess, if you will. Yeah. And that's that's actually that guitar right there hanging. It's, I mean, they're, I, it's hard to explain. They just, the feel of them was, was amazing. So, mm -hmm. and you know, and the body was a little thinner and it, you know, it had a, it, it made it different than a Les Paul. Um, I, and I'm not a Les Paul guy. Yeah. You said yeah, those and, were the exact but, words. <laughs> but, but I'm not a Les Paul guy, but I liked it. So. Yeah. We did, we uh, wanted to do a couple of, you know, I think with the Laplaya in in particular, in in that market space, you know, certainly uh, the big G is going after anyone, you know, who's potentially infringing. Sure. Uh, so I wanted to be very conscientious of that. I um, I don't have the money to fight it, and, and that's really, you know, when when you get into court, it really is that who who's got the most money to keep paying their lawyers to keep pushing this thing on. Um, they count on that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're, right. You're never going to yeah. win that battle. So no. for me, uh, you know, there was that, but that wasn't the real, you know, motive in, in building the time. I wanted to do something that, you know, it's kind of like how all the guitars in, in the line that we do are. I wanted to do something that just brought out the inspiration that, that I've been able to have over the years of my life from mm -hmm. enjoying these instruments, whether it was somebody else playing them or me. Right. We've all got our guitar heroes. You know, I mean, you guys just, you know, Jakey Lee, you know, just brought out that amp, you know, 
it, it, all of these these people who have been prominent guitar playing figures in my life have inspired the things that I do, right? Whether it's conscientiously or subconsciously, I, I, I everything that I do is kind of in a tribute to to all of that, Absolutely. right? Yeah. And and certainly, uh, you know, I mean, gosh, we could run down the list of you know Les Paul players, but you know, I think we're all familiar enough with them to know. Um, yeah, but I wanted to do something that said, yeah, it, this definitely harkens to that. But some of the things that piss us off about Les Pauls have been taken care of, you know. And it was really, <clears throat> I think I was talking to Dave about this at NAM. Um, it was really. I, I don't get a lot of time to just sit and play guitar anymore um, by the time the day is done. But I have, uh, you know, if you remember back when the original, uh, uh, like I think it was 2010, uh, the Slash AFD um, Les Paul Custom Shops came out with kind of like the kind of honey top on them and whatnot. Yeah, so I have sure. those at the house. And I was sitting when I was playing, I was like, and I was playing through a, a, a modeler and I'm not that familiar with it. So I'm fiddly farting with the buttons. And then I found that I was, you know, rather than just plugging into the amp that I like and, and dialing it in and playing, I right. was fucking around with the buttons more. But every time I would let my hands off of the guitar to reach up on the table to, to mess with the, uh, it, I was actually playing a head, through a head rush. I, uh, the guitar was unbalanced and unwieldy. Like it wanted to fall off my lap. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then after an hour of sitting there, I'm like, I can't feel my fucking toes. Like my femoral artery was being matched so hard by the by the straightness of the body. So, uh, and I know we talked about this, Dave. You know, um, we put a little bit of a leg contour in there. Yeah. You know, even you know, I don't know any guitar player who goes in woodsheds standing up. Now, if I if I'm you know if I'm playing live or whatever, yeah, there you go. Just that, that little bit of a curve there, just, oh, my goodness. It, it, it is, you know, and then obviously, hey, you know, let's just be honest with the belly carve, right? Right. Yeah, it's we could bad. all use that. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> and then, uh, you know, we brought over uh, our uh, our Evo heel from our Super Shredder guitars uh, on the Strat style. Uh, is is adapted into the heel there. Um, really, really great access to the upper fret area. Yeah. Um, you know, so certainly the visual aesthetic, it, it gives you that, that, you know, familiar feeling, but you know, the waistline is moved. Uh, th- there's a lot of geometry in there that, that makes scientific sense, you know? I mean, that's gorgeous. That's gorgeous. I mean, it's, it's, it's great, Mark. It really is great. Yeah. <laughs> and the, uh, I, I especially like the neck where you got the, uh, the truss yeah. rod adjustment. Right Easy there. access truss rod, like my guitars too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And and you know, Dave, that, that's, that's a must. For me, that is an absolute. Gotta have it. Is that, yeah. that, is that a first? I haven't, I, don't, I haven't seen too many set neck. No, guitars no, no. Like Those were, oh, set neck. Oh, I don't yeah, know. Sure. You know, that's I don't know. But I can tell you that there, there was a, it was cause for a good bit of concern here, you know, because we, we uh, typically design by committee. Right, which can be a pain in the fucking ass sometimes, but <laughs> I think when it all comes out in the wash, it really ends up being a nice thing because everyone gets, you know, you can point to something on that guitar and go, "I, I had a say in that." Right. Um, it, it, so at, at the end of it all, I, I think we we really captured the the essence of of what those you know historical models have brought. Mm-hmm. And brought something new to market. Uh, you know, of of those eight that we brought to to Nam, there wasn't one that was over eight pounds. Mm-hmm. So yeah, was that's a thing as well. And right? then you played with some wood by by accident. Yeah. What do you mean? Explain. So we have. <laughs> Explain. <laughs> you told story. You brought it up, Dave. Well, I, I well, I can't remember exactly, but essentially, you were saying so. You, when you made the prototype, you didn't want to, you know, waste a, a blank of big mahogany piece of or something, you right? know, just so the to pro- do the contours and see everything. So I'll let you finish. So Dave, Dave picks up the prototype and he starts playing. He's like, "This guitar is fucking badass. I can feel it. it just vibrates." And I go, "You know what that wood is, Dave? No, no, what is it? Basswood." He's like, "Are you kidding me?" I'm like, "No, it's a happy accident." So it has made it into production for us, you know, and 
and people kind of gas would back right yeah but, with a maple and, cap and a maple that's neck. A, that's what van halen and, and it was an all maple neck right yep so it was that so so think of the combo there you know so i mean basswood with a maple cap is always pretty good anyway yep uh, the, the maple cap gives you that, uh, you know, that snap and that punch. Yeah. Yeah. Very much like that. But, yep. but generally on the set neck, you wouldn't generally have a maple neck. Right. True. You know? Yep. And, uh, um, man, it, that particular guitar, man, just that, that rang. Hmm. That just, it was, it was, you hit, you just hit the strings and they would, they, they would, you could go to lunch, come back and it's be ringing. Sustain. <laughs> the sustain. Yeah, no, it, it really, it really was a happy action, and, and I'm, and I'm proud to say that I was so impressed. And then after our conversation, I'm like, "Damn the torpedoes, man! We're, we're going full bore with these things. They're just too good to not." Yeah. Um, it, you can feel the guitar in your body when it's up against you, and you know, you play like a G7 yeah. or something like that. That thing just, you can feel it. And and like Dave said, it, it just has sustain, no clarity. I mean, you name every characteristic that you'd like to see. You know, the bloom is there. Uh, it, it really, it, I was, when I came into, the, I'm actually in the demo room right now. When I brought that, that prototype in here and plugged it in to that small box, it was, it was double humbucker set neck heaven. I mean, th those two were just made for each other. I could have probably just left the room and there would have been some guitar amplifier copulation stuff going on. Cause it like, <laughs> it was, but I, and like for me to come in here and just sit down and play for 30 or 40 minutes is, is unheard of, you know, I'll come in here and, you know, it's quiet in here and get out of the shop, even, you know, in final assembly still got, you know, noise and racket and music and whatever. Right. So to come in here and actually listen and just, uh, let's just close the door and started playing. And I was like, I, I felt like a kid again. I haven't been that inspired to just sit and, and riff for a really long time. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah it, was, it was pretty cool. That's fantastic. Yeah. I kept coming back to the room and it wasn't just for his whiskey either. <laughs> but we had some, we had good beers like, too. <laughs> I was like, man, we yeah, brought like Den my Dennis, who's our sales guy. And I brought a Stefan and I just like, check these out. Yeah. No, we had a good time. No, I, I, I'm uh, I'm really thinking of doing that same thing again this year. It was just it was just a good hang, and we had a really bitchin' suite on the 14th floor of the Hilton, and we just oh, had maybe I time. should get, maybe I should give you more amps and make it a joint party. Let's fucking do it, dude. I'm in. Yeah, it's not, we, we just, it's not a bad idea actually. You know, I don't know if you remember, but just like a, a couple of doors down from where our room was, there was like a little reception hall. Could maybe fit like 50 people in there, 60 maybe, something like mm -hmm. that. I was just peering mm -hmm. through the windows. But I'm like, that would be where I have a bunch of cocktail tables, you know, maybe, you know, yeah. have the hotel hook something up with some some drinks or whatnot. But it was so much more conducive to, to being able to talk to people business-wise. Yeah. yeah. Um, and just bullshit. I mean, Dave and I BS for fucking hours while we we're there, you know, just because it was quiet and you, you know, the NAM floor, even last year and the year before, albeit much smaller shows, yeah. it's still pretty loud. You know, it, it's hard to actually conversate with somebody. And uh, this way, you know, people are like, hey, what room are you in? And they just came upstairs and we hung out. And Right. Uh, but then we had a good, I mean, it was like 20, 30 people in there almost all the time. Yeah. No, it was, it was, had a regular uh, amount of people. And, and I would venture to say, We'd have even more. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I'm into something like that for sure. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, not not a shit ton of amps, just a few more. You know, like a few more yeah. like key things. Well, no, it, you know, it, it ended up being because it was kind of a hurried thing. It, you know, that we ended up doing that anyway. Mm -hmm. So I grabbed the small box um, and took it, and then I ended up sitting and doing like an hour and a half long impromptu jam with Peter Nore and we only had one amp. <laughs> so I was yeah, just yeah. Playing, playing in air, but uh, yeah, it would have been cool to have, uh, you know, at least two amps, but um, you know, to be able to showcase some other stuff that, that, that is. Uh, Did you just book with the hotel directly? Yeah. Or? I had called them uh, and, and booked a room and then asked when I got there, if, 
there was an upgrade available. Mm-hmm. And she was like, yeah. So, uh, but I think I'm going to try and call in uh, a little earlier this year. And if, if that's what, because I was just uh, emailing with the gal today. Um, are you guys planning on going back this year, Dave? I, 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 I really don't know what the plans are. I imagine they're going to do a meeting room like they did last year. I would imagine. Right. I, I'm most that was likely. A, you know, that was a pretty kind of, I mean, even Taylor just had one of those meeting rooms, you know, yeah. the guitars hanging on the wall. Um, yeah. So I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. You know, it's, it's, it's fun. Uh, I went on the, I went uh, out on the floor on Thursday uh, and then I was in the room because we had people from Friday morning till Saturday yeah, sure. evening. I never, I never really left the room. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I did truck my ass down to get more beer and water, though. And no one ever yelled at you for noise. No, you know, we tried to be respectful. Yeah, you know? of course. And uh, but yeah, you know, but you put you know twenty plus guitar aficionados in a room with a bunch of guitars and amp. There's gonna be some noise. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Um, huh. gives got me, a gives question. Me some thoughts. Got a nice question from Landon Jordan. Uh, shout out to Kevin and I- Iconic Guitars. Love this dude and his work, and he takes such great care of his artists. Talk to you soon, Kevin Landon. Thanks, dude. Good to hear from you. Thanks for the awesome. super chat. We appreciate that. That's awesome, Landon. Thanks, brother. Yeah. Um, so, Dave, I was I was meaning to say, you know, you got your launch this week of the Jakey e. Lee amp. How'd that go? It's like a feeding frenzy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I I had to, I had to like go like that. I had to pull my finger back from the buy now button pretty hard uh, you know who to call yeah <laughs> don't, don't, don't do that um yeah it yeah it, it it's uh it's doing really well so um yeah i was listening to some we've already, we already gotten reorders um from, from you, you you just posted um what's the guy's name uh ben eller no um uh, michael nielsen yeah Pete Thorne. <laughs> yeah i His watched video. michael's video this morning and i was like that thing sounds killer yeah, all of them did. All three of those guys did really particularly great videos, and they're all slightly different, which is cool. Ben Ben takes a really long walk through through every conceivable like tone. Which yeah, Ben, is, ben I, did which a really nice cool. uh, playa video with us um, too. I I like the way Ben does his thing. You know, he's yeah. um, he explained it really well. It's like I was just watching. It. I didn't know what he was going to do when you know, and and I'm watching it. I'm like going. Well, he's really going through from cleanest cleans to ACDC, then to the next channel, and then to the next thing, and what it all does, and here's how you can use it, and here's the sounds it's for, and right, and he really did a beautiful job yeah. of explaining it. See, you know, because even when we did the the Laplaya video, he's like, "Oh, do you want it?" I'm like, "Dude, just do what you do. I, I'm I'm not your director. Just you yeah. got this. It's not not your first rodeo." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a great player. Yeah, I like Ben a lot. Really great dude. Yeah, he's a great dude. And of course, Michael and Pete. Well, yeah, they just well, yeah, yeah. crushing videos as usual. Totally. Always. <laughs> they're, they're fantastic. You know, uh, it's thought, always it's always a race to see who who's going to get the biggest views. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, I never yeah. I never look at that. Pete always wins. Does he? Yeah, he always wins. He has always. more, but he has more subscribers. He is more, well. No, actually, Ben has more subscribers than Pete. Oh, really? Yeah, Ben has like four hundred and. I think he didn't. Four hundred ninety. I think he just closed five hundred thousand, didn't he? Wow. Maybe he had five hundred thousand. When I looked at the thing, it was it was uh, four hundred. But he he does a lot of teaching, so that's why he has so much. And yeah. and then Pete's got two hundred and fifty or something thousand. Wow. And oh, then wow. Uh, yeah. Michael's like a you know paltry thirty five thousand. So yeah. But you know what? Um, Pete's stuff is a little bit more focused. You know, Ben Ben does a, a plethora yeah. of different stuff. Yeah. You know? yeah. And but Michael yeah. should have way, way more subscribers. Right. Mm-hmm. I agree. And his channel should have we got a question that just popped up. How does Kevin build his brand in such a competitive space? It's a great question. Had I known it would be this competitive, I'd probably be still be in my garage. Uh <laughs> but you know what? Hey, I I will tell you this. I have when I first started this, I had um an opportunity to spend about two and a half hours on the phone with Tom Anderson, just totally out of the blue, lent me his time. 
uh, was one of the most accommodating people I could ever talk he's with. A, he's a sweetheart. Um, have had dozens of conversations with Lance Lerman. Um, you know, love what LSL and those folks are doing over there. Uh, nothing but respect for what John Sir's got going. Uh, you know, building some amazing guitars. But I thought <clears throat> I could bring something to the space um, that was a little bit more. I haven't even begun to hit all the genres that I want to hit, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, when I first uh, did, you know, here again, the, the original models were like the dark side, um, you know, Gilmore inspired. I had another model called the Crazy Diamond uh, that was kind of modeled uh, after uh, Gilmore's uh, Mary Kay, that 001. Mm. <clears throat> and that was kind of how that started because, you know, I had the opportunity um you know, see Pink Floyd several times. I watched Stevie Ray Vaughan play guitar um, the night he passed away in 1990 in Alpine Valley, Wisconsin. It was an really? Air Class concert, actually. You were there? Robert Cray, yeah. That's what, that's my my home home theater was Alpine Valley. Wow. <clears throat> and uh, I, I I can I can transport myself to the space on the loading dock of the printing company that I was working for when I got the call from my then girlfriend, now ex-wife that said, did you hear what happened last night? Mm. And I said, no, she said, Steve Ray Vaughn died. Oh, I remember the day. Yeah. I collapsed on the loading dock and you know, I was on a Motorola StarTac phone. <laughs> I, I, I remember it, dude. I remember it like it was yesterday. Um, there have been two musicians in my life that I have a shed a tear. The first concert I ever saw was Elvis. When Elvis died, I cried. And Steve Ray Vaughn passed away, I cried. But to answer this question, uh, I really wanted to, to bring a, a, a wider palette, if you will, than maybe some of the uh, other, other brands were doing. So we've got <clears throat> some other guitars in, in the works. And I think you might have scrolled by it on uh, when you had the video up or the website up, Mark. But we, you know, how I built this here was I, I canvassed some other small builders like myself. And I said, Hey, I'm getting ready to do this thing. Would you guys like to join forces or would you like to continue on your own? And we all thought that we, we would be better together under the iconic umbrella. So I have a team here of guys who have been, you know, LA builders and blah, blah, blah. And each one of those guys had a small company like I did. And, and at, at the point when we, we joined forces. I maybe was doing a few more guitars, but I would say we were all fairly comparable. You know, I was maybe at, at that time, I was maybe doing 40 or 50 more guitars a year than, than those guys were. And um, when we joined forces, I got all of the input from these guys who had been doing this for, you know, 10, 20 and, and 25 years. So we kind of, you know, that's kind of like that group thing that I was talking about. So I'm like, man, we can really do some things in this industry that haven't been done. Um, there are, you know, without going down a big rabbit hole of philosophy, guitar building philosophy, there are things that we do here that might be a little bit different than other places. And there are things certainly that are very similar. <clears throat> but I think uh, bringing some of the finishing tips and kind of fit and finish stuff that I brought from building 70, 80, $90,000 motorcycles mm -hmm. into the guitar world, uh, again, which is still just, you know, scratching the surface of, of what I believe could happen. Dave seems some of that stuff, um, you know, and, and, and I'll kind of preface it back. Had I had a crystal ball or been able to see into the future, uh, knowing um, as maybe difficult and difficult might be an overstatement um, as it would be to, to get people to accept a, a, a new guitar brand, you know, because everyone's like, Oh, if it's not this, I'll mm, come. Mm, no, no. But you know, I would have probably started building basses because bass players are like, they'll fucking play anything like, Oh yeah. 12 piece neck. Uh, hell yeah. I'm in, you know, <laughs> That's true. all these exotic woods. Hell yeah. You know, but you know, guitar players are like, Oh, if, you know, if it's a, any deviation from Leo or Orville, I don't want anything to do with it. Mm -hmm. 
and, and of course I'm being a bit facetious, but you know, um, in, in generalities, uh, but you know, I think it's just like anything else, any, you know, it's not like when you get into, you know, roofing, you're like, oh, well shit, there, you know, there's already roofing companies out there. Why, why would I get into it? Well, you get into it because you think you can do it really well and you can make a living doing it. And that's why I got into it because I'm incredibly passionate about it. I, I love being able to look at a stack of wood and then what it makes like these things behind us and sit down and play it and go, we did that here. You know, like, yeah. Super cool. It, 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 th that's really it, you know, and then, um, not, not trying to put a bunch of marketing foolery into things. And, you know, you know, Dave and I talked about this at NAM too. He and I are kind of, you know, went to different high schools together, if you will. And I think you and I, Mark, are pretty close to the same age too. Back in the day when we were young guitar players, we would get together like on a Saturday night and whatever, you know, and bullshit and, and talk about the latest, greatest stuff that was happening either through guitar player or guitar world or blah, blah, blah. Did you see this new that or whatever? Or you happen to be at, you know, your favorite music shop. And you're like, Oh dude, did you see the new Charvel or the new Jackson or whatever, new Ibanez, whatever it was. And that was that word of mouth thing that, that helped spread. And then you had, you know, our, our guitar heroes our you know, Jakey Lee's our Warren D Martini's yeah. and Eddie Van Halen's and all these cats who were, um, you know, endorsing certain products and, and all of that. And, you know, I, I still have a, a Laney AOR Pro Tube 100 from when Warren D. Martini was endorsing them, you know. <clears throat> if you just put something in somebody's hands, you know, and that's kind of how I started. It's like, oh, like, well, why do you think your guitar's worth this? And I just like, here, play it. Yeah. Oh, shit. I get what you're saying now. So now... I guess in the big sense of it, I try to utilize um, social media for that purpose, right? To be able to tell my friends about what we're doing, right? Mm -hmm. it, it really just, you know, I, I have a, I have a problem with overstating things. You know, I, I, I don't want to uh, ever seem like, fake or phony or any thing, whatever, you know, I, I, I really believe the guitar play, the guitar should just speak for itself most of the time. But, but as humans with, with the voice, we've got to have a marketing program. So if, if you look at any of our social things or any of the videos that we have on YouTube or, uh, you know, any of the artists that we work with, it, it's really an organic. And I, and I hate to use that word because I feel like it's fucking Trader Joe's or Sprouts or something. <laughs> but uh, you know what I mean. But it really is. It's just been a, you know a, a a very organic experience. It's it's you know getting together with people like this and and, and talking about the guitars and you know uh, it really has been um, quite an experience. It, it it's been fun. That's awesome. Well, I mean, you're doing a great job. On you it. know, the thing too is about you know these higher end guitars, like when you're talking Anderson or Sir. Or iconic, or you know any any of these any of the Grosh any of these guys. It's really, it really really comes down to the final finishing touches, you know. To me, yep. you know, it's and it's Tyler, like you, you Tyler can just, is another one. Yeah, Tyler too. Sure, sure. sure. Uh, uh, yeah, you can, and probably a, a many more too that I forgot. Right. So please yep. don't, don't. Oh yeah, that, uh, that list is that list is long, sure. but um. You know, it's it's <clears throat> what you're paying for. What you're really paying for is the final touches of the guitar, the 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 fret. Because look, a Strat, right? An alder bodied Strat with a maple neck or a rosewood neck or whatever necks on it. All these guitars, you know, all these companies, they're not all that different. You know right. what I mean? Like wood is wood. You know, it can be multi pieces or less pieces or one piece or two piece or whatever. But what kind of wood is wood? It's about who selected that wood. Like, is it light, a light piece of wood or not? It, it's about, uh, you know, how the neck was constructed and what truss rods being used. Sure, it is about that. Mm -hmm. But but they're all very similar. But what what's not similar is how they finish it. So not only the guitar finish, but the fret work. So the fretwork's got to be like, you know, for, for all those brands are immaculate, you know, and, um, and 
and your fretwork, Evan, is immaculate. It's beautiful. It's thank you. It's like glass. It's amazing. We have um, so it's highly polished. It's just it feels you know you you bend the <laughs> string across it, and even if it's nickel, you know the you know standard original frets, not stainless. It feels like glass, hmm. you know, and and that can be done. And when that's done that well, and you know the action's just right, and the and the nut height isn't too high like some people do. And, you know, all of that is dialed in just right, man. The guitar is effortless to play. You know, there's and a that, real That's sweet. what sells it. I agree with you 100%, Dave. And there, and there is a, a, a literal sweet spot in there, you know, where <clears throat> I can see why, like, a, a company, let's say Fender, right? Fender USA, they're putting out 200 guitars out the door every day, like clockwork. Yeah. Right. I, I'm grabbing a number. I, I, and I actually think it's more, but um, let's just say 200. Sure. All over the world, different climates, blah, blah, blah. And, and I mean, we are to an extent. I mean, we, gosh, we're, you know, we've got guitars in China, Taiwan, Korea, Japan, you know, the farthest reaches of the, uh, of the world. Mm -hmm. um, as a matter of fact, man, our, our Chinese distributor is just killing it right now. Um, they just, it, uh, at NAM, uh, in in the in a couple of weeks after they had a big order, then they placed a big order, and then they just called. Uh, they had uh, we had shipped guitars to LA, and then uh, over there, <clears throat> they've already sold through those guitars. And I'm like, goodness gracious, you know. So that we were building some stock, and um, I think we had 20 or so guitars, you know, that we were trying to build for stock, and they're like, we're out of guitars. We we need <laughs> so they bought them all. Um, great problem to have, but to your point, Dave, when you take those extra measures and, you know, rolling the fretboard edge just so, and, and getting that end of the fret. So, you know, there's a, almost a, a peen to it and, yeah. you know, we have a method here. And so when I got together with Rob, who pretty much, um, Rob does a lot, a uh, lot of final assembly, and kind of runs runs the necks off of uh, off of production. So once once the necks come off of machine, it's kind of Rob's baby, and and he's got a bit of a team there that that he works with. And uh, so we've got a couple of guys doing frets now, but they're pretty much all the same. They're almost unintelligibly different. Yeah. You know, not different, right? And. Um, that you know, that was probably one of the biggest compliments that that I got from you, Dave, when we were at Nam. Was yeah. was that uh, because I do tell I take a lot of pride in in the way that that guitar feels in your hands, right? Because yeah. when I'm sitting down and playing, I can't read whose freaking name is on the headstock, and most of the time, I don't give a shit if it plays well and sounds good. Yeah, and 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 you and I both know that you know, like you were alluding to before, you know, in, in Alder Body, Maple Neck, Rosewood Board. Strat style guitar is expected to sound like so, right? But what will differentiate you? It's exactly what Dave is talking about. When you get that guitar in your hands, and and that that neck shape is great, and you know that's why we offer a, a, a plethora of different radius and neck shapes and nut widths and blah blah blah, um, and and have a great sales team that is able to elicit that from the potential buyer, whether that's a dealer or, you know, an individual <clears throat> being able to put all those things together and then get that into a guitar that when it gets to Dave or it gets to Mark, they go, hell yeah, this is exactly what I wanted. Um, because here again, even, you know, I, I have a bunch of different guitars, you know, people are like, oh, you know, you're, you're spoiled, but you know, you own a guitar company. I have Jackson custom shot, I have Gibson custom shot, Fender cut. I, I just like freaking guitars. I, you know, Sure. I, don't, I don't really care whose name is on the headstock when I'm playing it because I can't fucking see it. Right. You know, I just want to enjoy my time playing it. I don't want to fight the guitar. And it was one of the things, uh, you know, that I've had conversations with with my wife. Why do you need all these guitars? And I'm like, well, OK, well, this one's double humbuckers. This one's three single coils, you know, whatever. This one's tuned to half step. They're all different tools. They're doing different yep. things. 
and uh so yeah that but uh that's a know, hard that's a hard discussion i've had yeah. that one before too. <laughs> but you know <laughs> why do you, why do you, and then you go why do you need so many shoes well, I, I, I see the man caves are both still intact so yeah you know, obviously it's not too much of a problem no it's okay <laughs> that's fine yeah why do you need so many shoes yeah or, or <laughs> exactly my response I, i'm like hey we won't talk about shoes and purses or guitars and life will be just grand. Yeah, yeah. Was that? There was a meme that went around a, a couple of years ago that was, uh, it was like, oh, shit, I can't remember exactly how it was worded, but it was like, my worst nightmare is that when I die, my wife will sell my guitars for what I told her I paid for them. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, that would be horrible. Um, and I've had people hide stuff. Oh, I can. Oh, I've had. Thanks, Trevor. Appreciate it, man. Can you send it to my brother's house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've had that before too. Oh, oh my God! Over the oh, yeah. years, the, I've had them sent every different direction. Yeah, we, we, we just, we just I'm gonna uh, pick it up from him and sneak it in the house. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. We just had a similar a similar experience. We sold the guy a guitar, and then we happened to uh, Shad and I happened to be in a place where he was. And he walked in. He's like, "Hey, guys!" He comes walking up, and it right away he goes, "Don't tell my wife I bought a new guitar." <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, I've, I've, I, I can imagine. Uh, I have to tell my family don't stream any videos because my Wi-Fi is starting to get wonky here. Oh, uh, it's getting weird. Are you doing it on Wi-Fi? Or are you plugged in actually? Uh, internet. Oh, you know that's actually a good point. I actually am plugged in, so that shouldn't shouldn't, shouldn't really matter. affect it. Shouldn't have matter, how should it? Yeah, I don't know. I think you guys are kind of getting blotchy. I just wanted to thank, thank Trevor Norse. Kevin, thanks for being on the show. I checked out your site. Beautiful guitars. Thanks, Trevor. David thank Mark, you. great seeing you guys. Thank you. Awesome. Chad uh, Spidell and the thing he says, I like golf clubs. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. So oh, you guys are you guys are you guys on the YouTube thing? Because I I only see the uh, questions pop up on the bottom of the screen. Yeah, I see them on the side as the moderator. I see them on the side, yeah. Ah, gotcha. Um, well, you get them on the bottom because you, probably the way your computer is or whatever. Yeah, well, hell. Oh, I mean, you're you're streaming on the YouTube one. Uh, no, I, I went to uh, the link that Mark had sent. The link. Oh, was, it should be on the right side of your computer. Well, maybe like, it, it pops up on the bottom. But yeah, you know, so well, maybe it shows different on different size screens. My screen's on the right. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, you should see on the right where it says comments, banners, brand. and they changed it, and, and they've now changed it so I can actually comment. Oh, I saw I saw that the other day um, that they had changed it so like when you're on a stream you can oh yeah I was sign, in, in, sign in with your whatever. Google account and just you can you can say whatever. Oh, okay. Be before I would before I would have to open up another screen and have to go to the actual broadcast and oh really I mean, yeah i couldn't do this ever until recently oh okay oh yeah i, I said I, I just was uh, I, I went over here yeah i send it to my office <laughs> yeah to my office yeah nice who was that I, I don't have my glasses on i can't remember where the hell i said them <clears throat> that's funny Wait, mark so. mark's gonna get him a lefty uh yeah, Kevin, golf uh, Kevin golf we, we talked this about this already. <laughs> yeah, we, we uh and for those of you left-handed folks out there, I, I spoke with Mark about this a little bit yesterday when we were testing connections and whatnot. <clears throat> We've actually been doing left-handed guitars for probably six, oh Mark's in trouble six years. Um <laughs> and and probably have done the most left-handed guitars the last two years that that we've done cumulatively uh over the whole time uh and and there's i was walking the shop and and, and shooting some clear and whatnot today and there, there's actually three left-handed guitars out there right now so mark what are you gonna sell <laughs> kid <laughs> that's what it comes down to that right now it's like well, I no gotta... he's got kids are leaving right so i mean well boom, no, he's, going, gonna... he's going to college so oh all right well this yeah. Yeah, you still, you still got you know, yeah, still got yeah, yeah, right. So you got to pay for the college yeah. money. Well, he got a good, he got a full ride. Oh, great! Yeah, but nice. but yeah, which helps. But still, you got an apartment and the whole thing. So yeah, it's not going to be cheap. So yeah, I have to watch my yeah. expenses. But we'll be talking. I, that La Playa is beautiful. It's we cool. have not done a left-handed one of those yet. That would be uh, uh, something I'd be very interested in. 
Okay. Well, we might be talking because that would be beautiful. My only problem with getting one of those is I can't decide what I'd what color I'd want in it. Oh, I know exactly what I would want. Because yeah, I know exactly. Um, I'm not. I'm not one for the maple, uh, like the totally fancy maple thing. So I, I'd. When in doubt, get black, Dave. Well, yeah, but no, I'd probably maybe a gold top. I don't know. You know, well, you saw the gold top we had. I know, no, yeah, I like that that thing. I got to tell you that. Although black looks nice too, I don't know. Fuck. The gold, the gold top was a basswood body too. Yeah. Yeah, that was. uh, Dave, this this actually looks right up your alley. I'm gonna put it on the screen right now. See what you think. Um, Uh oh. Yeah. I probably saw it already. I saw the, I, that. They could t- yeah, that could yeah. T- that's the one that that's the one that Ben played. You know, it's not really right at my alley because I don't. No. It the the to me the white binding throws me off a little. I don't uh, really care for that. I would have to do something. I also wouldn't do the black hardware probably. I don't uh, see. Okay, see, not, not exactly. I thought you like black guitars because it's similar. Well, I do like that. black guitars. I don't necessarily always love black hardware maybe in some guitars but i probably wouldn't do it on that guitar although i gotta say that looks amazing yeah that's gorgeous that was a great piece of wood yeah that that really is sweet um i have a sir pete thorne gold top looks gold top coleman yeah the gold top is you know when you look at the uh i've never owned a gold top so there we go there you know what or we could do something even weirder you know something something like you know, like Pelham Blue or something, something like yeah. that. Oh yeah, that's... Pelham Blue might be kind of fun. You know what, Pelham? Yeah, I have Pelham one Blue ready to go and Pelham back there right now. Yeah, that. It, oh, it, uh, La, La, West La Paul and Pelham Blue looks great. A La Playa one. Yep. Send me a picture when it's done. I want to look at it. All right. <laughs> yeah, no, it's. Uh, we've you got... want another amp, right? Dude, come on. I saw like asking a crackhead if he wants more drugs. Come on. <laughs> I have uh, I have an amp problem. I actually had I actually the guys in the shop had a bit of an interview. They're like, dude, you're over 50. You don't play guitar professionally. You don't need any more boutique hundred watt heads. Yeah, I'm- but I want them. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Because I can. No one needs it. Well, I told you, Ben. Uh, so I had that. Um, I had a BE one hundred, and I just forgot the guy I got it from. But it was one that you had. Mine was a fifteen. Yeah. Oh gosh, I I know the cat's name. Um, it's escaping me right now. But anyway, I bought it from him. And you sold and it to Ben, right? Pardon me. Did you sell it to Ben? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, Ben's one he uses. uses. Yeah, he uses that all the time. Yeah. And it. it and that was kind of sadly, it wasn't like the first one to go, but it was the f- first one of the group of amps that I put up for sale. Ben's like, dude, I want that. Can mm-hmm. you tell me about it? So yeah, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> um, and then after I sold that one, I had buyer's remorse or seller's remorse. And I'm like, fuck it, I'm not selling anymore. So now they're just all, they're all, they're actually behind this wall here in, in uh, up on a, a pallet up in the shop. So yeah, I understand that. Joe uh, Alba. He needs a JEL 20. He probably does, but that's not a good enough trade value. <laughs> oh, yeah. You need, you need more. I need. He needs more. He needs a new Steve Stevens. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Or uh, something totally good. custom. Can't. Tra- yes. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his eyes. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> Wheels are spinning. Like, just make you a bad fucking ass amp. Yeah. 100 watt amp. Oh, yeah. Just cause. GBB well, you Jr. know what? Oh, sorry. I got some. I got some extra ducats that I think I could set aside for that. Well, we could trade. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not yeah. talking about ducats. Uh, GBB <laughs> Junior. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I appreciate the compliment. Um, he's he's looking for some parts for his bucks and bags. Yeah. Um. We, uh. Yes, we could probably do the missing lower back panel. I, I'm assuming it was a con- the bucks and Betty combo that you're talking about. Uh, we don't technically make it anymore, but I'm sure we could come up with the lower back panel. Uh, for sure, and a nameplate. Sure, that shouldn't be an issue. I, uh, uh, email me freedmanamps at gmail dot com, and I can work on getting that for you. 
I got stuff everywhere. So a lot of times we have, uh, I got like, yeah. You know, one of these? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can sell it to to GVB Junior. Well, you know, like I said, uh, you know that we use we utilize that that small box fifty. And as much as I love you, Dave, I'm not like always trying to advertise for you. <laughs> so it ends up being the the backdrop in a lot of uh, guitar photography when when Josh is doing that. Yeah. Um, so he's like, hey, do you mind if I take that off? And I'm like, dude, it's two screws. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> wet, dry, wet for EVH tones. Pitch shift into delay or mix parallel. What What's most authentic? That's a Dave question for sure. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, generally it was mixed parallel. Okay. Not one into the other. All right. There you go. There was a dry in the mixer and then that stuff was wet and that was mixed. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Amanda. Uh, as, relaxing uh, times make it Centauri think, time. <laughs> I, think I, said, I think I said to Kevin last night we have 99% uh, guys. Well, uh, there's Amanda. There's Thanks Amanda. For, yeah, we have Amanda. Amanda. We have Amanda. Uh, maybe I think there might be another female, but we cheers, we, Amanda. We Thanks, for, you. Thanks for hanging out with us. Yes, thank you. Um, and she's brothers with uh, I mean, brothers, she's sister of uh, Ben, ben Coombs. Coombs, Ben Coombs, who is our moderator on the show. Oh, cool, right on. Well, I haven't seen tonight, but I hope he's doing well. Um, let's see what else. What other questions? Stephen Douglas, uh, Dave, is the JAL 20 limited? No, it's not. So we're going to make it until you stop buying it. <laughs> How's that? Which eventually that happens. <laughs> eventually you saturate the market and eventually it, it, it slow, you know, it still sells, but it's, it dies off. Right. Uh, Demand yeah. has yeah. to slow down. It's eventually like we sold, a, a, you know, uh, a, a metric shitload of the Jerry Ken Trail Twenty One amp. I mean, we sold a ton of those over over the course of like six years, and then it's slowly starting just to taper off. You know, you know, it just taper it tapers off. It's just so. a natural natural product life. I mean, it, it, yeah, it, it, uh, normal. Yeah. yeah. So a Pelham Blue La Playa for for a naked. I'd spit shake on right now make it happen <laughs> there you go get it naked i love how you're making making deals for us <laughs> hey as long as there's a as long as there's spit shake and you know we're locking up it's, it's good to go <laughs> that's funny uh dave what all is in jason hook's new rig you built get him on the ah, show. you must have saw that from jason's social media i, I saw that I, on jason's too i did not post it jason's uh, coming on Jason's I never post on. any gear, uh, rigs. I do, uh, you know. I really should do that. I just ha I don't have you know enough time in the day to do that. But I need to actually. I have so many pictures backed up. You guys would be flooded with them. Really, of rigs that we. Yeah, you got to get a social media guy. Put out a book. <sighs> yeah, I got to get a social. That would media be cool guy. as shit to have a book like all the, all the different rigs that you've done over the years. Yeah, probably just do it on social media. Yeah. Okay. In Instagram probably. So. Yeah. I actually have that set up. Uh, I just need to start uh, posting them on a regular basis. So what's Jason's hook rig? So essentially, Jason had me build a rig for him. Um, what's in it? So it's. Let's see. There's uh, several front end pedals. Um, that um, there's a um, well. Let's see. There was an. Uh, Octa pedal, a compressor, a, a new a Boss compressor pedal. There was a um, what was the drive? Shoot, I forgot what the drive was, but there was a drive pedal, a boost drive pedal, and uh, there was another pedal too. And that escapes me off the top without going finding the uh, the actual schematic in the other room here. Uh, and then that went into the front of his EVH EL34 head, uh, EL34 EVH stealth or whatever it is. Uh, and he came out of that. Well, in the loop of that was a, uh, uh, a, um, decimator pedal in a loop. 
And then he had a uh, DD500 delay in the loop. And he took the preamp signal out, the preamp out of that amplifier, and fed... Um, oh, I'm sorry. There was also... Um, <clears throat> he has an even tight H90 in the rig. And the first half of the H90, because it's, it's really two, two processors, the first half of the H90 was also in the loop of the amp, which he uses for like harmonies and things. Um, and then, the, like I said, the preamp out comes out, feeds the other half of the H90 just directly, and that goes to a Mesa Boogie power amp, and he just uses that for pitch detune on outside wet cabinets, so it's a three-cabinet deal. So and he's, and it, it, it was actually it, deceptively simple, yet uh, also very complicated. <laughs> And he's using a GCX switching system, right? A GCX for the switcher, and he has... Uh, oh, also, there's a little pedal board out front that has one of the new um, Boss... Um, the the larger Space Echo pedal, uh, mm -hmm. which sounds awesome. And then he has a little pitch... Boss pitch pedal that he uses for these momentary functions that sort of drops in pitch and then wobbles. And uh, it's pretty cool. The pedal board is also in a loop that it kicks in and out, you know. We have been it was pretty massive sounding. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. It's got a lot of wires. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's a lot of wires. Yeah. Hundreds of feet of wire. Yeah, I'm looking at it. I'm like, wow, that's that's a that's why you get paid for it. Um let's see, Tim Berry. Thank you. Love you, man. Had a beer or two. But you guys had a beer or two, but you guys are great. Thanks for all you do. Dave is a treasure. Okay. Awesome. A national so treasure. Much. National treasure. Dave for president. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's be honest. Dave, you're probably going to do better than the last few we've had. So, fuck it. <laughs> yeah. I say, yeah. BE, BE, uh, or uh, I was going to say BE100s or Jakey Lee amps for everybody. <laughs> You'd be like Oprah giving amps out to everybody. You exactly. Gotta, yeah. Amp for you and amp for you and an amp yeah, for JJ you. JJ for you. Steve <laughs> Davis for you. Uh, so I, was trying, I, was trying to, I was trying to get um, Jake to come on the show for uh, the release of this amp, you know, just yeah. do another tone talk or whatever. <laughs> and he goes, no, the next time I, I want to do the show, I want to be able to play on air. Okay. I'm, I'm yeah. like, and and he needs some uh, carpal tunnel surgery or something that he needs to have done, uh, and so he wants to do it after that. So, oh, so that's good news. Let's see if that happens. Right. On. Yeah. Well, the good news and bad news. Is bad news. You got to have the surgery. Yeah. Good news is. Yeah, but it's rare, pretty minor. Yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty, minor it's pretty common. And, you know, yeah. Everyone seems to recover pretty well from that. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Well, Generally, they have use. Then it doesn't hurt anymore. I do uh, see somebody right. some of the guitars behind me, so I, I'm 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 going to leave that one where it is right now. Um, okay. That that one's that's not ready for full release yet. Uh, it's not a secret. Um, we've been partners uh, with the BC Rich guys for a couple of years. Uh, Bill and I are, are, are Bill's one of my dearest friends, um, but it is not my place to share those. They just happen to be stacked in here because I don't have anywhere to put them right now. Okay. There you go. We'll, we'll leave it there. Uh, Dave is yeah, possible? they're badass and they're fucking coming. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Is it possible for you to run the Hotone Ampero two both in front and the loop? Yeah, two amps in stereo. Yeah, it. Uh, wait, in the loop of two amps in stereo. Well, the ideal way you, you would probably do that is, um really use the preamp section of one amp and just come out and return to the returns of two amps because it, it, it's just a lot easier. You know, it, um, but technically, the Ampero actually could do that. It has the capability because of the effects loop can be stereo mm -hmm. that's on there. So theoretically, you could route exactly what you're saying to both amps with both fronts. You're going to have some ground loop issues that you have to work out, um, but uh, it can be done. That's a, that's a really 
cool pedal that is really useful. It does a lot of stuff. So that's cool. Mm. Uh, Dave Stephen Douglas, is there an easy way to add a foot switchable volume boost on the Jakey e. Lee? I know you hate these questions, so I apologize in advance. <laughs> I have a really easy way to do it. Buy yourself an MXR microamp and put, put it in, in the effects loop. loop. Yeah. Done. Instant boost. You're, and you're golden. So, okay. And it'll work perfect. It does work. It really yeah. does work for yeah, a volume boost. Well. Yeah. Yeah. I do that for the there, band. Remember, though, there is a certain point on the 20-watt amp where... If you find your volume boost isn't boosting your volume, that's because you're pushing the power section so hard it's starting to distort. <laughs> so you have to remember that. So there's only so much headroom in the 20 watt power section. So, and that's why we love 100 watts. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, if, if you're if you if you kind of play on the quiet side, you know, it's no it's no issue, and that's it's still it'll still work. It's a loud 20 man. It's not really. You know what, though? I, I got to tell you, Dave, I mean, I, with my BE, I recorded an album's worth of songs at bedroom volume with a 57 in front of my 412 cabinet mm -hmm. and my wife sleeping two bedrooms down. Sure. Not, not one time was the door open and, and you know, with with an angry wife saying, turn it down. Um, I can tell you, I still to this day really enjoy, you know, the, the modded JCM 800 uh, AOR. But that amp doesn't even wake up until the master's over six. Yeah, sure. And that's one of the things with like what you guys are doing and, you know, a couple other amps out there. You know, the, the master volume is so usable now. Yeah. That, you know, one could argue that there's not a lot of fidelity lost you know, by the power tubes, not just pumping, um, especially in a mix, right? I, I can feel it. You know, you can feel yeah. when that power section's really going, <clears throat> but goodness gracious for, for, you know, I could record in this room with everything going on out there with, you know, straight up 57, you know, maybe, you know, room mic or whatever, uh, you know, with, with my small box <clears throat> and be just fine. And that, that's uh, a vintage 30 in that cabinet, I, almost positive. That's cool. Um, how are sales for the Dirty Shirley lines, twin sister and little sister? Uh, it's good. Um, it's totally good. Um, uh, I mean, the Dirty Shirley has kind of, uh, you know, sort of... Uh, Been discontinued. Dipped, dipped. Well, I mean, it's not technically discontinued, but it's dipped off. It's sort of by sales has been discontinued and the twin sister sort of took over that, mm. but we knew that that was going to happen. So, uh, but there might be some in that format, those single channel formats. I might, we, there's been talk about me doing some limited runs of certain different kinds of circuits and things that are, would be kind of cool, you know, in in a in a fifty watt kind of format. Hmm. Yeah, I can do different things. I can do, with, I can do th different things with that circuit board and with that amp, you know. So you know, just a, a single channel of a great. I don't know. Hypothetically, let's say, hey, it's a fifty watt Jose, or it's a fifty watt what blah blah blah, or fifty, you know, this kind of thing. You know, you can do you can do different fun things. Pog Guitars, question for Kevin. What's your favorite guitar in your lineup right now? You know, I, I vacillate, and, I, and, I, and I'll tell you, I'll, I'll kind of preface this. I, I, I alluded to it a little bit earlier. <clears throat> you know, my first real guitar uh, that I started learning to play and kind of cutting my teeth on was that 78 Les Paul Custom Gun. I think, I think it was like 40% of my body weight or something at the time, you know, because I was 11 <laughs> when I got it. <clears throat> and I, it was 13, over 13 pounds. And um, I went from right in from that into uh, a San Dimas Charvel. So I have a really special place in my heart for, you know, the old, you know, super strats and, you know, the, the thin necks and that and, you know, those kind of. But um, 
for me, I am enamored, if that's if that's a great word to use today, uh, with the La Playa. Um, I, I have been blown away by what we put into it and what came out. Um, you know, we've been doing great, you know, F style guitars for a bit, <clears throat> have taken uh, some liberties with some of those shapes and, and done some of our own things uh, that I also like. I, I like the Carlsbad a lot, although I'm not a an offset kind of guitar person as, as a general rule. I don't play offsets. Uh, it's just not something I was ever into. It probably has something to do with when uh, I was born, you know, none of, none of my 80s guitar heroes were playing offset guitars, you know, um, it was Les Pauls and Super Strats. So that's kind of my wheelhouse, honestly, you know, it, it, I, I'd like, a, you know, a, a really stout, um, punchy feeling double humbucker set neck single cut and, and, a, and a bitchin double humbucker or HSS is, is kind of my jam right now. Uh, HSS um, Super Strat style guitar. I don't know. I, I could run gravel. I, 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 my guitars are literally hanging on the other side of the wall right here. I, I could grab the, the my one go to. Yeah, let's see it. Let's I'll see it. it. Let's see. Let me know if this light's better. It's getting dark here. No, oh, you're fine. You're fine. Uh, it's still fine. There's a question for Dave. Should I steer clear of the Jakey e. Lee 20 if I'm afraid it'll be too bright, or can you dial that out a bit? No, I don't think I don't necessarily. Well, it's hard to say what what you what you think is too bright or not. Oh God, look at that! Wow, look at <laughs> nice. Oh, it's sparkle too. <laughs> yeah, so this this is all flake. Uh, it, it's all flake underneath hand taped flames. Uh, you know, I have had the privilege of of meeting and and working with George Lynch on a few occasions. Uh, George has become a friend. Um, huge inspiration when I was growing up you know, when heaven comes out, just that, you know, come on. I mean, George, George was the man in the, in the day. Right. So yeah. uh, this has got uh, a killer uh, roasted five, a bird's a, a bird's eye neck. Um, got our salt pickups in it, a go to five ten. Uh, just, just a really versatile thing. I mean, you could do the cleanest stratty tones. You can, you can, you can, this, this pickup is, is 18 five K with uh, a five magnets in it. Uh, splits incredibly well you know when when you hit the push push right here <clears throat> this pickup splits it's still over 9k right so it's a great single coil yeah so it, uh and, and it plays well with the you know these these are right about that same <clears throat> same number uh a uh, little bit lower eights mid eights uh and then nine on the bridge of you know nine two ish uh really makes these play to get well together as a single coil and then when that He's running full humbucker. It's just a, it's a ripper. That's cool. That looks great. Those are your own pickups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are our, our revolution. Uh, this is the revolution assault uh, HSS set. Um, like I said, a little bit hotter output on on the singles uh, to kind of play well with the uh, with the hotter. Uh, humbucker. I love the I I love the um, almost like the, with the sparkle that 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 kind of reddish orange in the middle there just yeah, kind of really cool. pops. Yeah, you know, it's yeah, just like, you know the, the crappy camera on my laptop just doesn't do it. It's justice. but it's still I can see I can see that popping. It's just it's so it, it's, it's cool. Gorgeous, yeah, it's super yeah. cool, really nice. It's trying to get the lights on. Sparkles off. killing, killing on that. Yeah, so, so I mean, wouldn't I wouldn't it, normally go for that finish, but to be honest, with that sparkle like that, it's kind of it's kind of yeah. Even cool. even there's there is uh, gold flake over the black as yeah. well. So it, yeah, it, it's, it's a yeah. You always do the greatest finishes. It's, it's super. Like, come it has on. a lot of depth. To yeah. it. Yeah. That's awesome. I was going to ask you a question about, um, <clears throat> you know, the getting a wood, getting wood, attaining wood, you know, 5A, 4A, you know, figured. Getting stuff. harder it, and harder, just like everything else. Yeah. And more expensive and more expensive. Ungodly expensive. So uh, I was just talking with uh, one of our um, Boston area wood suppliers and a lot of, uh, you know, Tom gets wood from, you know, a lot of guys, you know, because he's, you know, doing it right, you know, going out, you know, purchasing dead trees, getting all the permits and, and everything else. And, you know, when you get on the East Coast and, and here with, with permits and this and that and the other thing, um, 
everything gets more expensive, right? <clears throat> so uh, I was just talking to get some some really nice tube quilt thick billets to do some of our La Playa's. And I, I I felt like a snake. My my jaw dropped so hard it like became detached from my face uh, at the prices we were talking for a for a billet of wood, you know, which is you know x big, you know, not a giant chunk of wood. It, you got about forty five minute, minutes, maybe an hour worth of fire from this thing, right? So, <laughs> which you at that price you don't want to burn. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, well exactly. So unless you're very wealthy. Um, but one of the things, uh, y that happens just like anything else, when, when there are a lot of regulations, um, you know, it's like hunting, right? You start putting all these government regulations on it. What do people do? They start poaching and, and doing shit illegally. Mm -hmm. So now a lot of trees are being taken illegally. A lot of the stuff that you're seeing on secondary markets like eBay and that are all poached trees. Like they, they've got no it's just becoming very in, expensive to do the maple stuff. Um, and I don't have the buying power of, uh, you know, Paul Reed Smith or, or, or something like that. Uh, you know, we usually get, you know, a, a, a pallet of, of billets, which is depending on the grade and whatever it could be, you know, if we get a pallet could be 18 to, to $30,000 for a pallet of billets to make guitars out of. Right. And then we'll bandsaw them and, you know, do, um, you know, tops, you know, quarter inch tops for bent tops and whatnot. But for the La Playa, it takes, you know, on average about a, a three quarter inch top. So it's, you know, a, a pretty good hunk of wood that we would uh, uh, cut in half to to get a book match. And right now. Um, I'm looking at, you know, with a five a quilt top. Our our offering price as an upgrade on the La Playa is nine hundred dollars, and and I'm asking myself if we're actually charging enough for that because it, it's so expensive to buy the billet. Um, wow! So it, it's uh, you know the the flame stuff a little easier to get, but but like the really nice tube quilt and and all that uh, getting a little bit more difficult to come by. Wow! Yeah. I hear you. That's why I asked because I figured it's got to be. My main wood supplier for that kind of thing literally told me the other day, I'm out of the quilt business. He said, when I figured the last load that I made, I was making next to no money by the time it was all done with shipping and everything like that. So, you know, there's nothing like getting to the end of the day and just figuring out you've covered costs. You know, right. you can't live by not making any money, just paying your bills. That's a great thing, right? That's cash flow in business. That's that's all fine. But when you can't make any money, that means you can't expand your business. You can't buy new machines. Sure. You can't grow your business, right? If you're just eking a living out, that's that's really not a great business model. So, uh, you know, like I said, when I hear the words, I'm out of the quilt business, I'm like, well, shit. Okay, now what? So that that's, uh, you know, for us, that's left a little bit of a gap because here again, we're, we're a small purchaser of that you know i mean yeah total accumulated we're probably on track for probably about 600 ish guitars this year mm. um you know one of the smaller boutique builders i i, I think usually uh last i heard actually i hadn't talked to tom personally but i heard during covid that he had bumped up to around a thousand a year um you know i think uh serves several thousand so in, those guys have a little more buying power you know yeah mm -hmm. that makes sense and they've been in the in the business for 30 plus years you know i i, I even at 10 years i'm oh, 11 years now I, I i'm still the new guy right 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 you know when people question why guitars are so expensive there you go this is why. You know what? One, this is one why. day it would be cool, Mark, on here. I was gonna. We were talking about. Uh, I was thinking about this a little bit earlier when we were talking about something else. One of the things that would be cool to do, you know, because when I originally came on here, I was on my iPhone. I'll put. I've got a bitch and gimbal for this thing. We should do a shop walk one of these days, mm -hmm. and you can just kind of see. You know, we do. Gosh, we probably have three or four, five, six, tour people through here uh, every week. It really gives you an idea, you know, because people think, oh, CNC machines, like like they make the guitars for you. They don't, right? No. Um, it, it is a replacement machine. 
because you know it's not like when you say hand built guys are carving neck carves with their hands you know everyone's using a tool whether it's a rasp or a file or, or whatever those are all tools the mm-hmm. cnc machine is also a tool right it just happens to ours happens to hold 12 tools and it can change and by itself it's semi-automated right but it does what we ask it to do and uh, you know it, it's a raging debate i mean you guys have seen it and it's been you know and it, Coincidentally, uh, I have it on good authority from uh, Bob Taylor that I, I, I think I would, I, I'd be safe in saying that, you know, Tom Anderson is probably one of the pioneers of, of CNC machining. Absolutely. In the guitar industry. Right. Yeah. So it was a funny story. I was talking to Bob guy. Taylor and Bob, Bob was hosting Tom Anderson down at the Taylor facility and Taylor's about 30 minutes from us here. Bob's be, uh, become a good friend of, of us and, and you know, tons. I mean, in my humble opinion, not to be all fanboy or anything, but there is no one in the guitar industry who's done what what Tom uh, or I'm sorry, what uh, what Bob Taylor and Kurt have done with Taylor Guitars. Even I, I don't know the percentage, but I do know that there is a, a percentage of investment ownership of PRS. Right. So even Paul Reed Smith, you know, arguably the third largest U.S. manufacturer of guitars, does not own 100 percent of, of PRS. I don't know what the percentage is and forgive me if I'm wrong, you know, blast me in the comments, whatever the case may be. I don't know the, the full numbers, but I do know there is a, a percentage of, of investment ownership there. But up until uh, Bob and Kurt retired and, and Andy took over, those guys owned the whole thing since 1974 and built the whole thing out. Mm-hmm. It, it is truly an American success story. You know, two young kids start a business with $10,000 loaned from Kurt's parents and turn it into a, you know, one of the most, you know, the largest vacillating Taylor and Martin share 80% of the guitar acoustic guitar business. And they vacillate between 41 and 39% yeah. almost yearly. Right. So to, to go from, you know, obviously Martin's, you know, way historic, but to be from 1974. So been glad to have that, um, level advice on what we're doing. Yeah. So when we're going through and, and, and trying to do what we're doing here, I try to look at what the people before us have done and learn from them. Right. And, and having somebody willing to lend you some knowledge like a Bob Taylor, uh, Grover Jackson, you know, some of the other people that have been doing this for umpteen years, you know, pioneers, in the guitar building industry has helped us out immensely. You know, I, I, you know, I will never be the guy that sit here and said, I've done this by myself. I had, I've had some, some advice and some help from some really accomplished people in this, in this industry. That's yeah. good. Yeah. That's great. You know, the, what we've seen, and I know Dave's been touting this since we've started the show is that this industry is, you know, a lot, a lot of friends in the industry. A lot of people are really cool and help each other out and look out for each other, which I think is super cool. Um, I had a question regarding going back to the wood thing. From a tone perspective, since this is to- called ton- tone talk, do you right. think, <laughs> do you think um, having a full figured piece of maple or a full piece of maple makes a difference if you have a veneer so well where i'm going with this is you know you're making these guitars and it's becoming more and more expensive to put these super you know figured tops on there mm-hmm. does, it, does it make a difference if you put a veneer on there you had a you know, honestly i think it does <clears throat> and david and i have had some good conversations yeah but he, he but he's saying put a maple top on it yeah like a photo flash add, or add no just add a, a, a veneer on it's top just of that a veneer, veneer but not a photo flame but a okay. veneer, you know, a veneer of real wood, but it's just real thin. Of so one of the one of the things, uh, so we do that on the bent top stuff, right? So those generally start at a, a little over a quarter of an inch, and then if we're going to do them on like one of our Solana models, where you know you've got the arm contour or, or, or anything like that, <clears throat> we'll put a kerf in the back so it'll bend and steam it and blah blah blah. There's all kinds of things that happen there. Um. So the top is fairly thin, a veneer of sorts, right? Um, but still fairly thick. But to do it on our La Playa, it, it has to be, it has to start out 
at almost three quarters of an inch thick because that's the depth of the carve from the flattest part by where the pickups are right hold on right behind my oh, head that makes sense that makes right? sense yeah and then to get into the recurve like that that that's the the depth that drops so you need that it, otherwise you'd see that that change in wood um and, and that's why you know here again like you get an r9 or an r0 or eight or whatever you know and it's got a figure top those are significantly more expensive because the top wood is is pretty thick. Um, the ideal way to do that would be to do like a maple cap with a very thin veneer yeah. that could be vacuum sealed and 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 pressed right onto there. Um, would there be any tonal difference? Probably. I will tell you that if you want to get into that talk. I don't know how much time. I don't know when the show, <laughs> right? You got, you have to go, Dave. <laughs> I'm but good. It's early yeah. for me. Yeah, I'm curious. I'm curious what you, what you think. Of for me, I, I believe that each instrument is a, the, the sum of its parts and that each thing, whether it's uh neck wood, fretboard wood, fret material, whether they're nickel or stainless, uh, body wood, whether it's a, a cap body, a two piece, a multi lamb, whatever. I think each one of those things lends itself <clears throat> to the characteristics that we've all become known, you know, like swamp ash versus uh, 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 alder on a, on a strat or a telly or whatever. <clears throat> I think all those things are val valid as a characteristics, but to say that this guitar will do this because of this, maybe in overstatement sometimes well you don't know really how it's going to come out you don't you know you, uh, you, the thing is <clears throat> i remember everyone gets hung up on certain things and it, it, it like for instance like a, a a one piece body blank so a one piece body blank grover grover was telling me he goes well that's really just not good he goes, the reason a one-piece body blank isn't good is because there's a much greater chance that it's going to, over time, it's going to warp and 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 actually just be Cut. unusable at, yeah, at some they, point. They tend to do yeah. this. Like, yeah. So, so, so when we, we have a, a, you know, and we have guys that ask for, oh, I want a one-piece swamp ash, blah, blah, blah. Right, so we have it. We buy wide stock. But I would, I would, I would 100% agree with that assertion. Yeah. Hmm. You know, generally speaking, and, and I'll tell you one of the things that we started doing four, maybe five years ago. When I'm doing an all maple two piece neck, so all of our 22 fret necks and 24 fret necks are two piece, right? So the fretboard and the neck are two separate pieces. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Whether it's a maple, all maple neck, or roasted maple, bird's eye, like this one right here on the, the tiger stripe guitar, that's a two piece neck. Something that I started doing a while ago, and now it's just, kind of become the norm for everything we do is I buy thicker boards and, you know, everyone's seen the videos, you know, tone tapping and all that. And, and, and that piece of wood will emit a note, right? It is musical, right? So my theory is this, if I bandsaw off a piece of wood thick enough that I can machine the fretboard out of it, and I take the other piece and, and we do the machining. We put the truss rod and, you know, if it happens to be a seven string or whatever, we're doing uh, carbon fiber reinforcement, whatever. And I put those two pieces back together. They're still the same piece of wood now with a thin layer of, of glue in there and putting back together. But if I take two separate pieces of wood and I take the fretboard from this one and the fretboard for that one and put them together and I'm looking for maple characteristics, Right. If, uh, and I'm just talking strictly maple maple here, whether it's roasted flame, bird's eye or straight. You know, we only use quarter sawn here. And Dave and I have had long conversations about why I do that. <clears throat> and I can go into that, too. We might need more stable. I, I believe it is. Right. So if, if you take, you know, if, if you take, a, you know, the grain of wood standing up like this is much stronger than it is like this. Right. So if you take, you know, a rectangular piece of wood. It's why beams are set like this and not like this in your house, right? Mm -hmm. They're much stronger like this. So that's the way the grain runs. I, I, we only use quarter sawn wood on everything we do here. 
except for some of the roasted flame, the 5A bird's eye is flat sawn because that's the way the bird's eye show the best, right? So whenever you, whenever anyone says this is all 100%, it's usually some variation of. <clears throat> but getting back to the next. So if I take a, a piece of, and I could show you this in the shop, I could run and grab one even if I wanted to. And I tone tap a neck blank, which our guitar neck blanks are 1.3 inches by 20 inches, 28 inches by four inches. And I tap that. It, it, it has a tone. Some are, you know, half tone, semitone, full tone, different. And you can hear it. So when I cut that fretboard off, do the machining and put it back together, by rights, it should still ring the same, right? The grain structure is still the same. The only thing that we've lost is is the kerf of the blade, the, the width of that blade that we wasted in wood cutting it apart. Well, then you put glue in there. Right. And then we put it back together, and, and but they're still mated, right? So that, that glue soaks into the wood and, you know, you, the glue line's invisible. Mm -hmm. I believe that has more of an impact on just the neck from the only aspect of my neck is a quarter sawn maple or a roasted flame maple or whatever it is. So from the characteristic that that particular wood would lend itself to the tone, overall tonal output that comes out of the jack of your guitar, I believe we're doing that 100% justice there by using the same piece of wood and then putting it back together. Now, when it comes to a two-piece neck that has a rosewood or an ebony or something else, it never really matters, right? Because now we've changed the the we've changed the makeup, we've changed the equation to say now I'm looking for a different tonal output or a different aesthetic from the ebony or the rosewood or whatever it may be. I'm 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 looking to hear and feel something different. It's not the same. <clears throat> Pardon me. So that portion of it doesn't, you know, that leaves the equation, if you will, right? Getting back to Dave's point, we, generally speaking, utilize two-piece center seam bodies. And again, you and I have had this conversation, Dave. Mm -hmm. I will go out and we only buy, let's just talk alder for the cases being. We will tone tap a board and they can be different, right? You can take boards are seven to 12 feet long when we get them, right? I can start tapping up at one end of the board and move down. And as that, you know, the 12 feet is a long section of tree, right? To get a, a nice eight quarter board out of. It will tone tap different. The note will change over the length of that board, right? And from side to side, sometimes. You have to, you know, and a lot of times it's, you know, there's shit running in the shop all the time. It's hard to hear, but you can hear it. So we try to match those pieces, right? So everyone here, I think, except for maybe one guy is not an accomplished guitar player. And that's me. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but all kidding aside, right? So everyone, you know, is, is music centric here, right? So we try to put those two boards together so that they're musical from the get-go when they're just two hung, two rectangles of board put together, right? And then they start their journey. And this is kind of what I was talking about or alluding to a little bit earlier when you say, what sets your guitars apart? These are the small things that, you know, compounding wise, as it keeps going over, like we talked about, you know, the next stuff, we talk about the, you know, the wood and the, you know, all of these things, um, you know, matching electronics, you know, Dave, you know this with, you know, with regards to uh, potentiometer values and, and uh, um, most pots that you buy have a plus or minus 10% value. Sure. It's an industry standard. You start to get into mil spec and that goes to what, 8%, Dave? You know, that's still a pretty vast difference. Yeah, right? so if you're talking CTS, that's even bigger. Than those right. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> totally, right? So you take... Uh, let's just say a, a strat, right? You know, my strat has 250k pots in it. Well, if you take a 250k CTS spot and you check it, it could be 
220, 270. If you're lucky. Right? And and those sound different. Those impart could also be 180. Food. Yes. <laughs> and, and and those and, and then you throw, you know, you throw the variables, uh, manufacturing tolerances in with uh, capacitors and, and, and these types of things. And they're like, oh, well, these pickups are, are this and that. Well, I can tell you that even two pickups that have the same DC output resistance can sound different. Oh, sure. Right? Absolutely. There, there are other there are other things at work there. So right? No, no, no two preamp tubes sound the same. Exactly. So I mean, you can literally in the two... first slot of your amp five of the same brand and hear distinct differences. Yep. So I can take two of the exact same guitars that were just built with all of the same specs and put them, you know, plug them into one of the amps behind me or whatever. And there will be subtle differences. Mm. You know, sure. alder body, maple neck, rosewood fretboard, three single coils, 250K pots, and the guitars sound different. It, it's just it, it the overall tonal output of a guitar is the sum of those particular parts on that particular guitar. Right. right? Now, we know that there are formulas that work well together. Right. And when you start. I guess doing what we're doing, that's where we're trying to control that. You try to control it as much as possible. Yeah. Right. But, but, you know, I got to tell you, you know, we build uh, our Solana VM, right? Uh, like, hold on. Um, that guitar right there mm -hmm. is the most popular guitar that we build. It's an HSS strat shaped guitar. Outsells everything we do. We've been, you know, yeah, that one over there. Yeah, <clears throat> we do those a god awful amount, and I love them. But there are ones that come off that I think sound better than others, and I can't tell you how many times I've you know I mean I'm, I'm sure you Mark you've had it Dave you've had it too right you have uh, you know your buddy's like oh dude this guitar sounds great and you get it and you're like yeah dude that's not my jam at all. <laughs> well, yeah. and, and and likewise you know sometimes there's happy accidents too with things you know where it's yeah. it's it's like hey like that's with the fly i have a yeah. i have a particular uh whatever i'm this is a hypothetical thing but i have a particular squire fender that i've had since 1986 that just sounds incredible and guess what it does sound incredible and guess what it does have like a four-piece body yeah and it, it you know it, it's like it's not you know Nothing special, but holy shit, this guitar sounds great. Sometimes, well, sometimes flute, the sum, you know, sometimes you the know. sum of all of that stuff. But the, but the idea is to try to keep uh, as much consistency as you can, uh, as you physically can between each. Uh, uh, you know, if you have ten of the same guitars, want them to be in the ballpark of each other, you know, and not be off in another, you know, state. Oh yeah, totally. I, you I know, mean, and, it is. And, you know, you're you're uh, attempting with amps. It'd be like it, it just it's just like owning a restaurant. Right. So if you, you go into your favorite restaurant and they've got a great lobster bisque or uh, whatever it is, and right? you want it to be the same every time you come back. Yeah, I, I, I'm telling my buddy, dude, we got to go out and let's grab some drinks and go get some dinner down at, you know, Javier's or whatever. Right. You want to go down there because you've done brag to your buddies about how great the lobster bisque is. You want it to be the same. Right. Exactly. So when we're doing what we do with guitars, we're, we're attempting to follow the recipe. Now, the recipe that we use, uh, you know, well, certain things have, you know, we, we've kind of accentuated. But, you know, we're not trying to recreate the wheel. Sometimes the wheel doesn't need to be reinvented. It may just need, you know, a retread or a little air or maybe just the wheel needs to be balanced a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. not, you know, you don't have to just throw it all out in the trash and start over every time. And, uh, you know, I guess I'd like to say I, I, I think that's what we've done on a lot of things. Right. We've just kind of taken some really good recipes and put our our personal flavor on them. You know, yeah, I've sure. got a question for you guys. So I saw this product. Uh, and then I have one other super chat I got to jump to. I saw this product. I'm not endorsing it or anything. It's just to discuss. Uh, it's called the Tone Traveler. Have you guys seen this? I, I have not. Show it. What's that? Yeah, what is it? 
So basically, it attaches to your acoustic guitar. Oh boy! And the and right. So this it's uh, basically <laughs> you lost basically, me an acoustic guitar. No, I'm just yeah, kidding. <laughs> uh, exactly. But basically, I'm curious. The the thought process is that when you're not playing your guitar all the time, it's not sounding its best. If you if you have a guitar that's been played and played and played and played, it's going to sound better than a guitar that hasn't been. So that you put this thing on there, and apparently it w breaks in your guitar by constantly having vibration going through your strings hmm. and i i have some i have some land i want to sell you right okay i was just <laughs> <laughs> that's okay i was curious is that in arizona dave by any chance <laughs> is that my oceanfront property i've been looking for in oh, oceanfront in arizona yeah, yeah. <laughs> no you know what um god you know mark that's one of those uh one of those rabbit hole things you know i mean i Gosh, I don't even know what scientific test you would do to measure that shit. You know what I mean? Oh, it's and, just, yeah, and it's one of the things that I love about the music industry in, in general, especially, you know, with stringed instruments that we're dealing with. Right. And, and I know you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. There are, there is so much um, <clears throat> fairy dust, if you will, that gets sprinkled on <laughs> everything. They're like, this is the magic shit right here. Right. You know? And, and, and sometimes there's a little validity to it, but a lot of times it's some marketing hocus pocus bullshit, right? Yeah. And, you know, anybody that knows me knows that I'm a, uh, you know, I don't pull many punches. I pretty much speak my mind. Um, and I would say that my wife might beg to differ a little bit, but when I'm, when I'm proven wrong, I am, I am the first one to admit it. Right. But there are some, here again, with regards to tone and guitars and everything, kind of kind of bringing that product into this. I don't know that if you would have bought a, a 50 Esquire and let it sit in the case until 2023 and you pulled it out today, if it would not be just a fucking badass sounding guitar mm -hmm. or because it didn't have a vibrating, you know, a vibrator, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> on it for for the last uh, 80 years that you know it, it's incapable of being a good guitar i don't know um, yeah it's a weird it's a i mean it's an you know i i have of course we've all heard that the more you play say an acoustic guitar or something eventually it's going to start to sound like you open it up or something i don't know but it's interesting hard to uh, say if that's true i don't know i've heard well, that theory i've heard that say. Say. Yeah, no I, i've, you I've know, heard that I'll, I'll, I'll buy in i'll buy into as a guitar ages the i mean the wood might well i mean if it's sealed really well it might not but it i was thinking gonna say the wood might dry out more mm -hmm. and depends on what kind of climate you're in you know acoustic guitar surely if you play it in a humid yeah humid climate versus a dry climate is way different oh yeah uh you know it, it's different than well, wood any, and, anytime you add and and and, and, and you know I, I would think a you know a wood a guitar over time with the wood drying out especially if it's in a dry climate you know would would alter how it sounds just like if you take you know if you take the acoustic guitar to the swamp and sitting there in the swamp you know in florida for for a while, I imagine that guitar is not going to sound very good. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be, you know, it's waterlogged, water man. Yeah, exactly. You know, and 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 the same same goes for speakers. I mean, speakers speakers like are, are affected by humidity. And, totally. uh, and, you know, and, that, and so that's a, I was in the car audio for a long time, Dave, and that's a, that's a really great point, right? So, uh, a majority of the old speaker cones are all you know paper, mm -hmm. right? they, and they absorb moisture. Sure. And moisture adds weight. So when you're trying to make an, a, a speaker excurt and retreat and, you know, and do this kind of thing, if it's lighter, sure. it, theoretically speaking, it should be more accurate. But well, I mean, it just like finishes. Like I've experimented with stuff before with like a, a guitar cabinet that's finished with uh, has Tolex or it's raw. It sounds considerably different. I'm going to go with raw is more lively. It's lively and it's it resonates differently. Uh -huh. uh, uh, potentially could be for the worse in some respects, but uh, right. um, <laughs> it's 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 definitely different. Uh, you know, just like uh, you know, I'm sure different finishes on guitars are are different too. How thick that finish is, 
going to sound oh, yeah. different if it's, yeah, any, if it's nitro versus like poly that. versus tolex is whatever. a vibration dampening uh you know poly nitro all, all these things are, are, are vibration dampening materials yeah right and 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 i think dave and i have talked about this too before um you know let's you know arguably one of the most popular guitars in the world is the stratocaster right probably sold more than than any other guitar probably all other guitars combined <clears throat> i have no empirical evidence please don't eviscerate me in the comments uh but it seems like there's a lot more e even than tellies right but man there are a lot of different sounding guitars that look exactly the same mm -hmm. you know what i mean so there is something to that something you know, and here again, I'll, I guess I'll go back to it. It's the sum of the parts, right? You take pick up windings, pick up wire type, magnet type, electronic. Oh my God, yeah. yeah. I mean, there are so many variables. Uh, you know, everything from, you know, the material, you know, the nut, uh, the tuners, you know, are, are you pot metal? Are you brass? I mean, there's so much shit, you know, that, that just 1% here, 1% there, 1% here difference adds up over the 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 sum of it all mm -hmm. that makes things different and that's i guess for me that's what i kind of dig about the whole damn thing you know what i mean yeah. it's it is uh it was kind of like when i was telling you about the basswood la playa when i came in here i mean it was just all of a sudden i i wasn't expecting much so maybe you know like when you go uh to a movie and you're like yeah whatever you know some chick flick i'm going to with my wife you know and you're like damn that was a really good movie mm -hmm. you know sure Maybe because my expectations were a little bit lower, um, I, I, I enjoyed it more. But then after after a while, then I just realized, no, uh, it really is just just a badass sum of parts. And, mm -hmm. and I think Dave, I, Dave alluded to that a little bit earlier because he was, he was quite enamored, too. So that's awesome. Uh, Nick Mars has got a question for me. Hey, Mark, not to put you on the spot. That's all right. But you got one guitar, one amp, and three pedals. Go. Ooh. All right. So I've been thinking about this since I saw the question. So uh, <laughs> uh, BE100, um, I would take my EVH Wolfgang guitar, and then I would take the new EVH SD3000 delay. Oh, with yeah, yeah. with with a uh, a reverb pedal and a boost a buxom boost. Look at that, Friedman's well represented. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> buxom boost. The, the free, I mean, the EVH delay, and like I would, I have a Keeley reverb that I really like. So I have in the stack right next to me. There's there's one of those in there. Oh yeah, Keeley reverb. Yeah, you know, yeah. It, 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 I, I'm probably pretty close to the same. You know. EL34 based, uh, you know, 100 watt head, um, mixed 412 cab. Um, hell, dude, I, I, I'm fine with like, a, you know, I, I'm a I'm a chorus delay and reverb guy, and that's it. Mm. You know, uh, and I'd be just fine. For me, I, they're never, you know, the the time based effects are never so prominent. Uh, when I play uh, that, that that they're overbearing, uh, I, I could get by with, you know, a, a TC or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, you know, a nice little reverb pedal, uh, a, a delay in a course, and I'm, I'm good to go. And what kind of guitar? Uh, depending on depending on the job. But if I um, – if I had my druthers, it's probably a, you know one of one of my uh, you know super shredder. What we what we used to call the San Dimas, uh, and I I never got into this story with you guys, but uh, being that um, you know those, those early San Dimas guitars have such a uh, a big part of my life. Um, when I first came out with those Floyd Rose equipped guitars. Um, I call them the Evolution San Dimas, right? So it was kind of what what those guitars were happening in the '80s there, but in a in a 2000, you know, tens 
kind of version, compound radius fretboards, jumbo stainless fret, blah, blah, blah. So it's essentially aesthetically the same guitar, but with a, a little hot rod to it. And then uh, our friends over at Fender reacquiesced to the uh, San Dimas name. So I figured I better stop poking that bear. And uh, uh, so we just call them now the SD, which is the Shredder's Delight. Uh, so very similar to, you know, what we what we were doing over here. And um, but to be honest with you, it's it's this all day, every day. There you go. That's sweet. Oh, you got to love it. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Same same pickups as you know the uh, the uh, Revolution Assault, you know, high output. That's a really cool finish. I don't think I've ever seen. I, I don't think I've ever seen qu anything quite like that. Yeah, we, William did this crackle. Um, I mean, I, but it's such a bizarre. I've never actually seen another guitar with that same sort of thing. Yeah, that's kind of unique. It's cool. It almost yeah, so looks. It almost looks western. In a, wheel, in a way. It's ever so slightly, it does look ever so slightly that way, which really, it's not, but. Yeah. But it, but it, it's really unique, which yeah. is kind of neat. It's always fun to have unique stuff. But then, you know, oh. I mean, hell. I mean, I. That's sweet, too. That's super cool, too. Is that like a little bit of a satin finish? Yeah, this is uh, semi gloss all yeah. over. So this, you know, yeah, this that's super is, cool. Uh, I super like you know, that. A, um, uh, a 25 and a half inch scale Les Paul style guitar. Yeah, right? yeah. That's cool. Super cool. With, uh, yeah, very, ma very mahogany cool. body, maple cap. Yeah, that looks beautiful. Killer. Yeah, I, I could I could rock something like that. But, you know, I, I vacillate a little bit um, between uh, where I'm uh, feeling musically uh, with scale length. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, sometimes I like the, the the 25 and a half, and sometimes I like a little bit shorter. So that's kind of why I like the Wolfgang. It's I don't know what the scale is, but it seems to be a shorter scale. Uh, you know what? I'm not 100 percent sure either. You know that? Yeah. It's not. It's not fender scale. It's a fender well, scale. I, I thought it was a 25 and a half. Yeah, 25 okay. and a half. I don't know. And the PVs yeah. and the uh, the the other ones, they were all the I same. I, yeah, see, I don't really care for the Wolfgangs that much. I don't really. It's not my jam. I mean, I I think they're great guitars. I think they're they're very cool. I did really like the Ernie Ball versions of the EVH guitar. I thought that yeah, was those really cool. Well, yeah. Uh, I wish I had one. I don't have one. I wish I had one. Oh man, the price on those. Oh, the price has gone through the roof, so yeah. I can't. I can't. I mean, I I would buy an Access because it's the same guitar. Right. True. Uh, but but I kind of wish I had one. I don't have one. If I had to pick, that's a rough for me. If I had to pick the amps and stuff. Uh, okay, so if I'm I'm if I'm, I'm going to go for this too. So if I'm going vintage, I'd have to go with my original 50 watt uh, Marshall um, that I've had forever, the Plexi that kind of spawned the whole amp line. Uh, but I I'd have it into a load, and then I'd slave it through a power amp. Um, power amp could vary depending on what my mood would be. <laughs> um, and, uh, for effects, it would, I would I actually agree. I would say the EVH delay, the new EVH delay is freaking awesome. It is and great. I would have to say, so I had get three effects, right? Yep. Um, but, uh, but boss old boss octave pedal and a uh, my old boss phase 45 pedal um there you go if i had to pick newer amps i would do the jakey lee 100 all right with the same effects okay tell me man has a question for you do you have a showroom in carlsbad we do i'm actually sitting in it okay cool yeah so um we uh, we we don't do like sales or anything out here. It's a manufacturing facility, um, but we do have a demo room. So most all of the pictures you see uh, that are in here, uh, Josh does a miraculous job of making this room look much freaking cooler than it is. Um, but there is there's probably fifty guitars in here right now, um, but. Uh, 
anybody's more than welcome, you know, hit us up, shoot us a message, come on by. Like I said, we, we probably have, you know, on, on an average, probably half a dozen people that swing by every week. Uh, we've always got guitars coming through production. Once guitars kind of go through and get final assembled, they come up here. There's two racks of guitars behind me, rack of guitars over here, um, and obviously guitars behind me here. <clears throat> Everything kind of sits in here and just gets used to being a guitar for a while. And, you know, usually three to four days, sometimes a week, uh, depending on where we're at with shipping and whatnot. And then it goes back out, final QC, make sure everything's right and tight. Everything's up to spec. Uh, if anything needs to be addressed, we'll take care of it then. And then it goes in the box and shipped. So at any given time, there could be, you know, 20 to 40, 50 guitars available to play. That's great. Uh, Mark, oh, I, forgot, I, I forgot to pick my guitar. Oh, oh yeah. you did, Dave. I did yeah. not pick my guitar. You know, I'd lo I'd love to say one of my own, which I which I do like and I do play and I do have, but there's one particular guitar I really like, and I I, I have a road worn Fender Strat that I that I actually have two of them that I've had forever, seven and a quarter radius, and it's got a humbucker in the bridge. Well, one of them is a humbucker in the bridge and a and a single coil in the neck, just that's it. And that one I have set up as kind of a hardtail. And the other one is a hum single single, which just has the trem that's on it. Um, I don't know why. I just love both those guitars. So that's that, if, I, if I had to pick, you know, yeah. okay. I had to pick one, I'd probably take that because I've had it forever and I just, just love it. Awesome. Yeah. Other go. than that, there's a prototype Cali I have that is kind of a one-off and it's got a, a non uh, fine tuner Floyd on it. And oh. it, it's a different neck than the production ones that Grover had made. I, I love that guitar a lot. Hmm. So sweet. And thanks. Ray it's hard to choose. Once you get a lot of stuff, it's really hard to choose. Cause you're just like, which child is your favorite? Well, you know what? It's well... Kind of, you know, I, I go, um, I, these are just honest answers. I make I make, make a lot of gear, but it's just like you know. Well, yeah, you know, but I, I vacillate with musical taste too, right? So I, right. I I can be, you know, in in the heavier side of things, right? I can be doing some Friedman era, Megadeth, yeah, sure, whatever shit like that, and and, and grabbing a, a, you know a Strat and doing that is single doesn't work. I'm not gonna do it, right? No, no, um, I agree, I agree totally, and and well, like also, I'd be that in that mood too, which yeah. which is why I have multiple guitars. See, exactly. you get, See? You get this me, is me. why you have multiple amps. I mean, I have, oh, I mean, over here, I mean, I have a, a vintage high watt, I have a, a vintage band uh, bandmaster, and I have my dirty Shirley, and I have a Jose, and I have the bandmaster. In the other room, I have a small box, and I have a B one hundred here, and I have. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, I get it. And all of them are great. The addiction is real. Hard to hard to <laughs> na nail it down. But, you know, if I just had to pick one thing, I guess it was the amp that spawned the amp line. Of course. So, For you sure. know. Dave, do you want to address anything about Friedman guitars? They're they're out. Yeah. They're they're they've been shipping. They're not on our website yet, which I don't exactly understand why, but we'll, we'll put them on. <sighs> Okay. And I, I really have to bring that up. <laughs> hey guys, you know, guitar ship. Why why isn't there something on the website? Yeah, that would probably be we changed idea. websites and we took down the old stuff and was gonna put up new stuff and then it just somehow stalled. So I guess I'm gonna have to uh the web thing is just prod that along. Yeah, my it's a constant changing. You're constantly like you put up the new website and then you're like, Oh fuck, I gotta tweak that. Oh shit, I gotta tweak that. Oh man. I got to do that too. I got to make it. I want to make it so when if people buy a product on the website, they can pick their Tolex, they can pick their piping, they can pick their panel color, their logo color. I want to be able to do all that. You know, some of those come with upcharges, but then I got to get the list together and I got to get it to the web guy and he's got to update it. It's a, the thing. Yeah, no. And then when you do all those things, then it breaks something else. I'm sorry to hear that if you can't get the super chats out. Yeah, uh, I just other people are doing it somehow. Yeah, I'm not sure. 
Mark Robinson became aware of Iconic a few weeks ago from a friend's Facebook post. I only live just around the corner from them. Scotty invited me to check out the showroom and workshop. Need to arrange a time for that. Cool. Mark, hit us up, man. Uh, Scotty has Scotty's one of my dearest friends. Scotty is uh, head of the finishing department, and um, Scotty is one of our oldest uh, artist endorsements. Uh, Scott is a San Diego legend, played in a, a popular band back in the day called the Mud Sharks. Um, you know, been, just knows every cat, you know, from here to L.A. Great guy um, and has made his living playing music for since I've known him and, and way before. And uh, when we decided to kind of ramp this thing up a little bit, I threw on my Facebook. I'm like, hey. I'm looking for some guys that have some skills, uh, you know, because I'm, I'm sure you guys are aware there are a lot of people out there who don't know which end of a wrench to use and things like that. <clears throat> and Scott replied, he says, hey, you know, I, I've done some things in my life that I think might be valuable. He was already a great dude. We we're already good, really good friends, already an, an iconic endorsed artist. Um, and that was a little over two years ago. And the rest is history. So if you know Scott, um, either hit him up or, or shoot me a message uh, via uh, Instagram or smoke signal or email, whatever. We pretty much answered everything uh, and come on by. We'd love to have you by. Awesome. We'll have to try um, the smoke signal and see if you actually answer that. Yes. <laughs> it's got to be weed smoke though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then we'll definitely then come by. just thank you answer, Dave. <laughs> right? I answered Dave. He's good to go. <laughs> L. Scott music, but no Freeman guitars on Sweetwater. Uh, I just checked. There I don't think they have there. anything right now. But there's a whole bunch of other dealers that have just gotten a ton of stuff. Mm. Look, look around. Yeah, go in reverb. You can probably see. Yeah, just do, a, do, just do a search in Google. Yeah. You'll, you'll, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll come up with ones. Let's see. Have you tried rewording your question? YouTube can be fickle. Oh, interesting. Um, let's see. All right. Well, I think we've gotten to all the questions. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, Kevin, I really appreciate you coming on the show, getting to know you and get the chance to meet you. Well, Virtually. I thank you guys for having me for sure. You're going to be a lot poorer soon, Mark. Uh, yeah, I'd love, well, I got to wait. I, I still have a, I, I, you're sending me the Jakey e. Lee camp, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, so yeah, I, I still have to pay you for that. So okay, all right. Well, you, I can tell you, you right now, Mark. If we were to start, I, I, we may have talked about this a little bit yesterday, um, but it's kind of like a layaway plan of sorts, right? Our backlog right now is ten to twelve months, mm. and um, you know, so typically how we do it is is a half, you know, half down deposit, and then you, you've got whatever that time is until we get going and, and get the guitar done. <clears throat> um, when the off chance that we have some guitars available, we put them on our website and then they, uh, the way we have our integration uh, for direct to consumer set up is this. Uh, and something that I want to talk about really quick, because um, I know Dave and I have had some, some conversations about the direct con to consumer. And if we've got a few minutes, I just want to, uh, I yeah, want to out there. Go for it. I know we've been going for, what 223 or something like that um but one of the things that is happening in the in the musical instrument industry right now is direct to consumer we saw fender kind of turn their shit on like a thief in the night pissed a bunch of dealers off right mm -hmm. gibson kind of did it with a little bit of advanced fanfare but still pissed dealers off you know and then they opened the uh, you know the nashville store and then Fender just opened, you know, the big uh, Tokyo store and dealers are like, oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. We've supported you over these last years. And <clears throat> but, you know, the, the reality of it is, is that everybody's got one of these in their hands and they're and they're shopping all the time. Um, so I, I think Fender and, and Gibson and I, I've had long conversations with Bob Taylor. Taylor Guitars is now also. Uh, the, one of the first things I said to Bob at uh, NAM was, hey, Bob, how's direct consumer going? And he looked at me with a genuine smile on his face and he said, Kevin, I sold 37 guitars online last week. Now, 
I know what they output out of uh, El Cajon. It's, it's, it's a little over 200 guitars every day. So to sell 37 guitars online in a week is, is uh, literally a drop in the bucket for what they're total, you know, in between Takari, uh, the Mexican uh, Taylor factory uh, and, and the American Taylor factory, they're over a thousand guitars. So that's literally a drop in the bucket of guitars. Right. But they're still doing it. Um, so we've talked about doing direct to consumer, but we've also going back to wherever an hour and a half or two in the conversation ago, we talked about, we've partnered with some really great dealers who have helped us build this brand. We don't want to just piss them off. We don't want to cast them to the wayside. So I think we've come up with a program that works pretty well. Um, so how we're going about it is we'll continue to build guitars with with some to be slated for either new dealer opportunities or or dealer sales. Uh, and this is what happened. I, I mentioned it earlier with our, uh, our Chinese distributor, TYT. Um, we had a group of guitars. We had pictures of them. We put them on uh, a shared drive. We shared the link. They said, we'll take them all. But what we're planning on doing is, is offering those out to our dealer network as in stock guitars. Um, because right now, how we do it is most dealers. And I think, Dave, you guys are doing the same thing from our conversations, right? The dealers will say, hey, we'll take, you know, whatever, 10, 12 guitars. And we want three of these and four of these and mm -hmm. this color, that color and blah, blah, blah. Right. Well, this gives the dealer an opportunity to go and literally just shop online on our dealer portal and say, hey, we'll take this one, this one, this one, this one. They could either continue the purchase right there on uh, on the dealer portal or call us and say, hey, we like this one, this one, this one, take that. So we're going to put them out there. But then, you know, if, if our dealer network doesn't absorb those, we're still in the business of selling guitars. We're going to put those guitars out for general consumption. Mm -hmm. And that way we've we've offered our dealers the opportunity. And either they've, you know, been fine or whatever the case was, and then we can move on there. And and from my interactions with the dealers that we I, I've talked about this with that that seems to be a workable plan, right? We're not stepping on those toes uh, over there, um, you know. But they understand that we're in the business of selling guitars, just like they are, right? Um, <clears throat> so that that's kind of how that is, is working for us on direct to consumer. It, it is something that everybody in MI is is considering and or doing i think you guys are doing direct now too dave right yeah we do some we, we do we do some direct but you know it's not it's not massive it's not it, it's we do some direct it's not massive sales but right. you know sort yeah, of like it, the bob it, taylor it, thing compared to what he put outputs yeah it's not like huge but yeah, it's it, the same for us but you know the the i mean i think the big problem that winds up happening is a dealer, I mean, we have a lot of amps. How many amps do I have in my line? I don't even know. Uh, we have a lot of amps, right? It's like, how is a dealer going to stock these? Right. All, all of them. It's almost impossible. You know, it's just like for a dealer. Right. right. They're going to stock what the newest thing is or the, what their market seems to tell them they should stock. You know, what their metrics tell and, them. And, 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 you know, and, and then, you know, it, it's it's just easy for us to offer it on our website, you know, um, because we, we can build it and ship it. Yep. Done. You know, it's just like if you don't choose to stock it, I mean, well, you want us, you know, what do you want us to do? Um, but yeah. Uh, oh, Christian Daniel, Dave, if Celestion wasn't available, what other speaker brand well, or brand would you try? Certainly that would be a big problem because to me there are is no other speaker brand <laughs> <laughs> so that would be a big issue um hey oof, that would be rough man uh I, I i i would probably pick some versions of some weber speakers maybe uh Weber used to make uh, or some scumbag speakers would offer some of those uh all of which uh Weber used to make scumbag scumbag makes scumbag now but Weber makes good speakers um that's a tough one yeah that is I wouldn't I would uh, you know yeah if Celestion just decided it, to it wouldn't be eminence 
It's not my thing. I, I yeah, can, well, I can know, hear eminence means... instantly. I can hear it instantly. It's not my thing. I have uh, Fender 1960. Thanks for the super chat. And same with Christian Daniel. Thanks for the super chat. I have a Friedman Cali, Friedman Dirty Shirley Synergy module, but I can't decide on my first Friedman amp. 20 watt version. Is there a more versatile? Is one Honestly, more get the Jake. Get the Jake Lee. That's going to give you everything. I think it's really versatile and it's got the Plexi channel, which is super cool. Cleans it. And, 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 you know, and. And you can use, you don't have to use it in the high gain, the highest gain mode. You can use it in more of the 800 gain mode, which is a good versatile, crunchy channel. You know, you don't have to necessarily have it be blistering, you know. Just good overall uh, sort of British voiced uh, fire breather sort of thing, you know. It's cool. Cool. Yeah, there will be one here. Cody Garcia, hardly ever catch you live. Love your show and have listened to almost every episode. Hey, thanks, man. Uh, I want to ask, what does Dave think of the Bogner Ecstasy? The Bogner Ecstasy, I mean, that came out so many years ago, and I was involved with the owners, part of the owners of the company at the time. I mean, not involved. What, what I mean is I worked for a making music when I was a kid, and make it, the owner of making music was involved in the Bogner company. So, I mean, I saw, I mean, I remember when Reinhold walked through the door at Andy Brower's studio rentals when wearing flowered pants and not being able to speak English. <laughs> so, I, I mean, you know, today. an ecstasy is a, a cool lamp. It has a certain sound. It, it has a, it has a thing. It's, it's pretty smooth sounding and it's on the darker side. Jeff, definitely. So, uh, I, I mean, it's a cool, it's a cool lamp. Cool sure it was like one of the first like you know channel switching boutique yeah you know heavy heavier sounding amps you know awesome all right well i want to thank everybody for checking out the show tonight <clears throat> and uh kevin thank you so much for joining thanks michael appreciate you guys having me yeah great day yeah it's awesome learn all about iconic guitars guys check out iconic guitars uh, dot com and check out their website and reach out to kevin or the team and uh, get your guitars all right um we we do have jason hook on the line for coming on the show soon so once uh that gets scheduled, probably we'll in september probably think, yeah they said they had new music coming or soon. maybe slightly sooner maybe towards the end of the month so jason will be on so he can talk about his own rig yep and then uh, we'll, we'll have another Ask Dave. and uh, We'll throw Ask Dave in there, and uh, you can ask me, oh, I don't know, whatever the hell you want to ask me, I guess. <laughs> um, and that's, uh, that's, that's it. it. So check out Fixed Pedal Boards. Hit subscribe, guys. Yes, yes hit subscribe. Guys, we saw a report. Just, we saw just a, a really quick plug. We're, we are attempting to... Um, build our youtube channel so if you'll head over to the iconic guitars subscribe there we've got trying to put new content over there uh whether it's you know uh little tone tests on guitars on the shorts or you know full length reviews uh stuff like that hit us up we'd like to get over a thousand subscribers here pretty soon so awesome yeah. I'll, put, I'll put a link to that in the description <clears throat> of the video thanks mark appreciate it dude no awesome problem. yeah so but so yeah subscribe because it's the number of viewers that watch our show is immense compared to the number of subscribers it really is and you never know there you know there might be some contests in the future where you have to be subscribed and stuff so you should you know you should definitely go and just hit the button yep <laughs> it's hit not the, hard click hit, hit the bell too. do it up and then again check out uh sweetwater if you guys need to buy anything like the new jakey e. lee amp yes. uh Hit, use our link in our in the description below and uh and then we will and also check out fixed pedal boards yep mark's got it right there just read the screen there we go <laughs> <laughs> all right guys have a great weekend kevin hang all right, on guys, thanks for, thanks again have yeah, a great hang on a minute kevin yes Wait, sir one second. yep take care everybody enjoy the weekend later